set. Ewers with pressure in his face, escapes the pocket, tucks the run. Across the 25, has the first down, stays in bounds and takes it all the way into the end zone. This is 365 Sports, powered by Sikkim365.com. Rattler on third and eight. Herman brings pressure, hit as he throws, jump ball. Sixty Five Sports is presented by IdealMRI.com. High quality MRIs for four hundred ninety seven dollars or less. IdealMRI.com. Your health is important. So is your budget. Second and seven. Ball outs. Mitchell dropped it. It's scooped up by Carr. You mentioned it. The three time captain, Mr. Duke, has a touchdown. 365 Sports is also brought to you by Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, protecting Texans since 1952. It's an old school formation for West Virginia on third and goal from the two. They give it to Donaldson and he is in for the touchdown. Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel? Search 365 Sports on YouTube. Brought to you by TFNB, your bank for life. Slovis under pressure, ducks away. Sends it downfield, it's in the hands of Roberts, and he's loose. Chase Roberts being chased, but nobody's going to catch him. Touchdown, Cougars. 365 Sports is turbocharged by Unite Private Networks. Find out more at UnitePrivateNetworks.com. Coach Sonny Dykes looking for answers to DJ Giddens. No response here. Giddens to the house. Now here's Paul Catalina. Alongside Garrett Ross today. G Money, what's up? What's up, man? All right, so... Uh, like most restaurants in America now, we are smoke-free today. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah. Well played. <laughs> no, but uh, uh, Smokey is down visiting his brothers in Florida. He sent us a picture. It looks like they're having a, a, a nice time together. By the way, did you look at the picture that he sent earlier? Yes, I did. He and his, I'm not sure which brother that is, but the one that's sitting just off to... To his right? To his right. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like... Those are like the other two. You can tell that they're brothers when they're all together. Right. But if I had to pick out, if he told me like you only get one guess, like if you put more people in the room and you have to guess the brothers, that's the first one I would give. It. Like right there, that one is your brother. No, they, I, like, like the, their facial features, the top oh, yeah. of the head, the forehead. They oh, definitely have it going oh, on. Oh, it's wild. Yeah. Maybe we'll put that. We'll put that picture up up later. Because you're having a big old time. Uh, Craig uh, turned 40 years old today and is uh, going to go uh, celebrate. See, here's the thing. I totally am a big proponent of taking your birthday off. I like that, yeah. I, I, I am. You did, did it uh, this year too, right? Like around, well, around your birthday. Was, uh, my birthday was on a Saturday, so we came back from the Super Bowl and I had it right. It was that yeah, Saturday. You took, but you yeah. took birthday. Essentially, yes. Yeah, you took birthday time off. Correct. Right. So um, I, I think it's a big deal. I think it's a big deal because you only get one day that's Garrett day, that's Craig day, that's Paul day, that's your day. And if it's not a big deal, like, you don't have to make a big deal. I get annoyed at these people who are like, oh, it's my birthday month. I'm like, ah, right. up yours. Like, no, no, no. You get a day where you can just, you know, celebrate yourself being alive so I, with I, the people you love. I'm all for that. And I used to work for a company, man, this was early on in the 20s. And, and it was a paper company that's been closed down and everything. But- uh, back then, they used to give you your birthday off, and they would give you a floating holiday to use throughout the year. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always thought that was cool, like because like and like you're talking about, just have it to yourself, have your birthday, be able to celebrate that. It's cool. I'm glad Craig's off and Tyler and being able to kick yeah. it with his family. So I'm happy for him. A absolutely. So uh, thank you to all in the chat. Let me just tell you, we had to end the show early yesterday, yep. and I am as pissed about that as anything in the world because we were having a very good and interesting chat with Mickey Spagnola, of which you will not get to see. Correct. <laughs> you, you won't get to see any of it. We've got John Machota today, but it was very interesting in the scope of 
like, and Mickey is Mickey and I don't see this the same way. No, but um, but it is good to get the other perspective because you can find yourself in an echo chamber uh, of, of different things, and you like I can see both sides of that issue. Today, I, I'm going to tell you this to the chat right now. If we go off today. At any time before, like if it was 5.30 yesterday, by the time we would have gotten done, it wouldn't have been Correct. worth your time. But if it in the middle of the show, that happens, we will get it back on. Don't disconnect from the chat. Uh, we are still connected to it. We just have a machine that streams us that is, um, it's called the Azure. And Azure is Dutch for a uh, piece of crap. I would agree. It is, uh, it's a machine that uh, we hate collectively. We have discovered a way to completely bypass it, but that will probably be another week or so away from us doing it because we had to do a lot of tests. We've done our first round of tests. Now we have to uh, rearrange uh, a great deal of cords and uh, computer routing things. So let me just tell you, get that bit of housekeeping out of the way before we get to some really good, interesting sports talk. There's uh, a lot of cool things going on today. We're going to talk a lot about the Big 12 tournament. Mm -hmm. The top four seeds are the ones who advanced, uh, which is not a surprise because they got to sit there and eat pizza for a couple days. Baylor and Cincinnati's first half was a total just bleh, last yes. night. <laughs> if you like made baskets... It was not for you. Um, but before we get to that, I just wanted to let you know, do not leave us. We will get it back on. We know how to do it. It just, it, it, it's, it's tedious. It, it's tedious. It's like an old school, I would say, to compare it. It's like the cable routers you had. Like dial up for AOL. Like, yeah, you yes. have to restart the whole thing, <laughs> yes. and then it's this whole process. We got to get it connected to our software. It's just, it's annoying. So. I, I say all this uh, in advance of saying we have a lot. We're going to talk a lot about Big 12 basketball day. We're going to talk a lot about the CFP. That appears to be, is it approved yet? Have they officially done it? I think kind of maybe they, they have. They have, but the details on whether this is actually going to go to a 12 or 14, um, that hasn't been determined yet. But you know for that it will at least be a 12-team playoff going through that begins in 2026, going to 2031, I believe. Yeah, so that's been approved. The playoff expansion, all that's there and available, so that's there. So we're going to talk about that, but, um, you know, Houston won comfortably yesterday. Uh, Tech won comfortably yesterday. Mm -hmm. That's a great matchup. Iowa State and Baylor tonight. Uh, they only played once during the year, Iowa State and Baylor. Baylor is the only team in the Big 12 this year that Iowa State has not beaten. And if you remember, that game was here at the Foster Pavilion, and Scott Drew did not see most of it on the floor oh, yeah. because he uh, was ejected from that game. And that began the great officiating outcry of 2024. Uh, <laughs> if you'll remember, uh, Bill Self and Kelvin Sampson yes. also uh, were participants, were uh, went into the breach, so to speak, on that. So that was the game. So that's that's they only played once this year, which is the one thing about conference expansion that kind of sucks about basketball. You know, for football, you know, them playing everybody every year, eh, I mean, I was fine with it. Mm -hmm. But, like, it, you know, I liked it. I like that it'll provide more variety for football. I like right. that it'll pour more variety for basketball. But now I just wish they would play less non-conference, play everybody twice. Just play 30 regular like conference games. <laughs> and then and then play a couple of non-conference games. Of course that would skew your record Absolutely all kind of crazy. Uh, and I don't think anybody wants that. That's just me as a a person who really enjoys watching Big 12 basketball. Um, and the way it can be like you can and which is why I think it is the best league is you can turn on almost any game any night and not have any interest in either teams. Like, I don't care about Oklahoma and TCU. Like, right, I yeah. mean, they're not a fan of either one, but I can turn that game on and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a decent game. No, I'm going to get a really good game with teams that are going to be in contention for the NCAA tournament. No, I agree with that. I, and we had the I brought this up to you yesterday. Like we had the the question a few weeks back where uh, the viewer asked if you would compare what you have with the Big Twelve basketball to SEC football. And while that's a good question, I think a better comparison would have been to the SEC baseball, where you have top to bottom um, just dogs in there. And that's the way it is with the Big Twelve and basketball. Man, yeah, you're right. Like 
if you look at B, like just the new teams that came in are a prime example because none of them were expected to come in and have success. Uh, but you have UCF sitting there stunning Texas, stunning Kansas. Uh, they look really good. We saw what BYU could do. So, yeah, I think having that in, it's fun. I do kind of miss having everybody play each other twice, but I also think it helps you once you get into postseason um, where – you could not be so beat up at times from the the rigorous uh, week in and week out act week mm. night in and night out action you have. So I think it could benefit you tournament time. But as far as the action week to week, night in and night out in the league, it does kind of suck that you don't get to see those matchups uh, doubled up like you used to. Yeah, but look, you know, for all those things that we're going to lose, you're going to see like if you're an Iowa State fan, you're going to play Arizona. Exactly. They're gonna, you know, you're going to play Colorado, who's a good team. You know, look. You know, Utah's got a really good basketball history. You know, Arizona State needs to get their ish together, but let's um, show they've had people in the past. But you they've just got to build. Yeah, it. they've they just got to get it. Look, look, they as an athletic department know exactly. this. They have to get it together. They have to get it together. Um, they're they're not they're not coming in on the strongest wave of of athletic success. No. Although I'll t- I will tell you, their baseball history at Arizona State is absolutely excellent. Uh, so that should make the baseball conference uh, even better uh, for sure. But those games are tonight. I think Houston and Texas Tech is going to be a bare knuckle brawl. I think those teams will get r- really after each other. Pop Isaacs had a fantastic game yes. yesterday, uh, and if he is hot and locked in and healthy, and and look. I, a lot of Tech's worst games have come when they're not completely healthy. When that team's completely healthy, like they appear to be right now, they're very scary. So, um, and you know, Houston has been pretty much invincible since they lost that game to Kansas. Mm. Uh, so, I don't like. Eventually, maybe somebody's going to get them. And if I were Houston, I would rather that be because t- look, tonight's the last. Tonight and tomorrow are the last two days that anyone can lose. Right, and it's fine. After that, season's over. You know, so, um, you know, if somebody's going to get them, if I'm Houston and you tell me you've got one more loss coming for the rest of the year, I'm like, well, it better be in the next two days if that's the case. Well, but, uh, you know, it, it's that's going to be a really a, an interesting testing ground for the Cougs. No, it is. I just I, – I, I'm concerned if, if I'm tech that – I don't know that Pop Isaac's going to be able to have the type of performance he had against BYU, against uh, Houston, especially when you have Jawan Roberts more than likely going to guard him and lock him down. I, I just think Houston's defense is so good that I don't know that Tech can keep up with them. Um, I just... It's one of those where if you look at that BYU game, if BYU was hitting those shots that they – like if they wouldn't have gone 3 of 18 in the first half from behind the arc, I mean, they more than likely probably beat Tech. So uh, while Tech is here and and they rightfully have earned that, I don't necessarily think that they can compete with Houston. I just – I don't see it. Yeah, I I mean, it's it's going to be interesting. So – and then when you get to Baylor and Iowa State, they are different kind of style teams. Uh, Iowa State – can morph into like maybe a couple different things and roll mm-hmm. with you, but they're very good on they're good defensive team. Uh, Coach Ott's got them going going really well uh, there. I they were leading Baylor for a good chunk of the first half, and then uh, I think Scott Drew's double technical kind of woke Baylor mm-hmm. up a little bit. Uh, and then we had John Jacobs on the next day, and I said, "Well, congratulations on your for do you get like a." like two thirds of a win or whatever. And he's like, no, 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 no. And yeah. like, of course the most humble human being ever, um, and John Jacobs and the way that, um, they were able to come back and win that game and get some shots and get, they did get some calls in the second half. Um, but the, um, it was, it was again, a classic big 12 game. Mm-hmm. And it's one that Iowa state, I think really wants back and Baylor, uh, you know, look, they, they finished very strong against Cincinnati last night. They like once they took the lead, they didn't give it up again. Right, uh, but they've got to as they get in deeper into March. Baylor has to stop starting so slow. It's going to do them in because eventually you're going. And have you seen it this year where they've started so slow that they can't get all like the the game in Lawrence against Kansas. They almost came all the way back. But the reason that they didn't is because they started so ridiculously slow. They have got to start hitting shots early. I don't know um, if they need, you know, I, I I don't mean to use the second sea biscuit analogy of this week, but <laughs> that was the thing about you remember the movie Sea Biscuit? Yeah. So like in Sea Biscuit the thing that would make him go faster is that you had to like let him 
go out and then you had to pull him back and let him see the other horse pass him, then 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 he would be like, oh, okay, the now, that, like, yeah. now I'm really in a race. You know, like that was what would kick in his instincts of competition, so to speak. And um so are they sea biscuit? Do they need to see the other team like ahead of them before they wake up? And I I don't think that that's a good path to have because we don't know what their draw is going to be. I think no. they're set up right now the way that Bracketology, like if it's Jerry Palm or Joe Lenardi or whoever, to have a pretty good draw where they match up really well. Although uh, I've seen one where South Carolina's in there, and that that one would scare me a little, a little bit. But they have a, a good opportunity to be, you know, of the teams, the two teams that have to play that weekend, they – they could very easily get to the six sweet 16, which I don't think was the case the last couple of years. Like getting North Carolina in that second game mm -hmm. two years ago, Creighton last getting year. Creighton last year were both like getting North Carolina for anybody anytime in that tournament was was really bad news. Because uh, until Kansas woke up with, with 15 minutes to play, like North Carolina had become this team of destiny. Mm -hmm. um, ask Duke, who thought they were going to get to beat for North real. Carolina on the way out for Coach K, and they didn't do it twice. But uh, Creighton, especially last year for Baylor, was if you could have picked one team to put them against to knock them out of the tournament before they probably should have been based mm -hmm. on their talent and seeding, it would have been Creighton because they couldn't, they didn't defend the three very well last year. They weren't very long on the outsides and or on the guards. So, like, they just couldn't really defend the three. So, if you're going to fight a team that like gets hot, like again, BYU is a great example of this. If you play a team that's similar to BYU that hits like seven threes in the first half, oh yeah, like it's going to be a problem for you in March for sure. We'll see. That's one thing that's concerned me, and you could kind of tell last night because it, the 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 rhythm of Baylor coming out. You had Ray J. Dennis miss the shot early, and then he had a lot of just just blatant turnovers. That's got to get fixed as well. But the the thing with me last night watching them and. I, I've caught myself the past few games wanting to dog them, but after watching the Texas game, the way they were able to come back from that, I've, I've, I've learned to hold and just let the game play out because I have faith that they can come back. But, man, I don't see them being able to get down against Iowa State, um, especially with not having Langston Love. For, and, I, and I like – the idea of what you're doing, let Langston Love sit out and use him for the tournament. Like the same method that Kansas is doing with Dickinson and uh, McCuller. But at the same time, man, like, I don't know – the matchup wise, they they're just gonna have to get structurally better because you can't get down, uh, you can't have these costly turnovers. I did like the rotation last night in the in the second half, or no, it was in the late in the first half when they adjusted and they brought in Caleb Loner and Jalen Bridges and went bigger, uh, and they adjusted to the zone and kind of took away what Cincinnati was able to do in the top of the paint. I thought that kind of worked. Unfortunately, it wasn't able to work in the second half. But if you're able to do that, I think that's what you're gonna have to do in this matchup with Iowa State because I don't think guard wise, without Langston Love being on the floor, that you're gonna be able to control control uh, Tamlin Lindsay the way he is because he is a dog offensive and defensive. Uh, but at the same time, you got to worry about Robert Jones, the big forward that the Cyclones have. And I think that's one where if Baylor can get that matchup with Loner in the lineup with Bridges, kind of eliminate Robert Jones there, that's the only hope I really see them having of getting Iowa State. But as far as the tournament goes itself, I, I personally think Iowa State probably wins the regular season tournament. And you still would have the better chance of winning the Natty, kind of like Baylor mm -hmm. and Oklahoma State did a few years ago. Mm -hmm. But right now, I just I think you're good. I think it's going to play out where Baylor is legitimately a third best team in the Big Twelve. I just that's how I see this unfolding as the weekend progresses. Yeah, me too. I think I think they are the third best team uh, in in the league. I think that that's that's going to play itself out uh, over over the coming uh, days. Um, and they're very like they and Iowa State are not far. Obviously, they beat them. Them right. and Iowa State are not that far apart. Them and Tech are not far apart. I mean, they split no. with Tech, obviously. You know, like those top four. Um, I, look, the top, the top five in the league. Houston's ahead of all the rest of them, but two, three, four, five, and six. I don't think we're really all that far apart. No, they're pretty close. They're pretty close. Um, and again, like. Uh, Kansas is in that like the weirdest Kansas year that will ever Kansas. Yes, you know, it's not just, happening again. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen again. I, I I really don't. Look, they took all their. I didn't realize they'd taken their whole penalty this year. I didn't realize that either until we talked about it yesterday that they took their whole penalty this year. And since they took the whole penalty this year, well, and then you didn't like all those things. You had two recruits that transferred out before the mm -hmm. season started. Uh, like late, like September. So it's not like you can just go get somebody. Right, yeah. And then 
And then you had the, you know, Arterio Morris situation, which is really bad. And then you have Nick Timberlake, who just is not a Kansas player. No. Like, you know, he may be, maybe if he was at Oklahoma State, he'd be better. You know, like one of those things. But he's just not a Kansas player. He's not a Bill Self type player. It's just not how it works. So, um, but that all, all kind of fell at once. But, yeah, I don't think that's, that's it. Uh, all right, let's run down some news real quick, Garrett. Okay. Jawan Howard out at Michigan. A day after Jerry Stackhouse out uh, at Vanderbilt. Uh, two days after Kenny Payne out at Louisville. Here's the thing. If you're an ex-NBA player that people would recognize, not your week uh, for being a college coach. No, it's not. And I think that kind of makes you give a little pause if you're Penny Hardaway. And what's the, the, the way that, that Memphis run has kind of gone, you kind of wonder if he's the next one that's going to get right. the axe coming out of that. I, I think Memphis might give him another year. Because he might they, get a pass, but they yeah. like love Penny there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they love Penny, but it hadn't paid off for them yet. No, you know, I mean, they had James Wiseman for all of an hour, right? Like right. it felt like you know, all, all like all these things, all these recruits he's gotten, he's gotten two or three recruits that are huge gets, and then because of some rule he broke or you know, kid changes his mind or whatever, they just don't wind up there. So, uh, and and the thing about Penny was. Memphis is one of the best basketball areas in the country. Absolutely. Like, it's a fantastic high school basketball area. There's a ton of talent. They wanted to keep it there at Memphis. And, and you know, they've done an okay job of that. But, but for the most part, they just – it has not paid off for them in the slightest. No, it hasn't. And I'm kind of looking at this. That I'm wondering what Michigan's going to do there because we know – they like to keep everything in house, but it just hasn't worked. Do you try to go outside and find a coach? Do you wait for Ohio State to find their guy first and they kind of counter it like that? Yeah. Uh, there's so many layers to that, but I, I think that would be one where what is the value of the Michigan job these days, in your opinion? Because like I know early well, on it I, used to be magnificent. Well, they weren't they weren't that bad a few like John Howard had them going well. With well. Dixon and them, they were pretty good a couple years yeah, ago. But I mean, I think Jawan Howard, he had some health problems. They had that fight on the plane, mm -hmm. like all the whatever the, the incident on the plane. I don't know if it was a fight was what you'd call it, but they had a, an incident on the plane. All these, like he got suspended, you know, like all these kind of weird things that happened with Jawan Howard. Uh, clearly, it had kind of gotten to him a little bit, I think. And, you know, that uh, that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's unfortunate that it didn't work out for him there, but. Uh, Michigan is guilty of this with football, so I'm not surprised they're guilty of it with basketball, of reaching into their past yeah. and hoping it works out good. And for every Jim Harbaugh, there's a Jawan Howard. And, you know, like it, it's just, you know, uh, for every Lloyd Carr, there's a, you know, like it just it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And yeah, he's one of the Fab Five, and that's great. But, you know, um, they maybe need to just have some fresh blood in there because they went eight and 24 this year. Right. They lost two players to the NBA last year and they lost Hunter Dickinson to Kansas. And if I'm Michigan and I've got Hunter Dickinson and he's, he's in the portal um, and it like Hunter Dickinson was in the portal for NIL. Yes. Like let's not, you know, he may love it at Kansas. And I think he does love it at Kansas. Like how could you not? But, um, but I don't think that, and part of that might have been because of also Jawan Howard and the way things were going, but you can't just lose players like that. You can't do that, you know, and, um, you know, that that loss, they couldn't fill it. They, like, you lose Hunter Dickinson, it, it was kind of all over for them, 8-24 and 24 this year without him. So after being a tournament team just a year ago. So I, I don't – and with everything, it was all the friction that he was causing. So I don't know. Like, I how do I view the Michigan job? Yeah, still a great basketball job. Ohio State, still a great basketball job. Louisville, great basketball job. But to pretend like – it's the same thing as it would have been. I don't know, because things are, are definitely different, but well, I, so. I, I'm kind of curious because I don't, and I don't know if it's, it's a move they would necessarily make, but this is something I would really consider if I'm Michigan, you have all the money in the world now with um, how the big 10 and the sec have split and, and everything. We'll get into the, the particulars of the new CFP and the money and everything here in a bit. But do you, Give Rick Patino a call and be like, look, you were able to salvage this season 
with St. John's when it was going terribly. You called out everybody. You looked like you were past your time, your prime. Now you have everybody bought in. You have St. John's about to play UConn in the Big East Championship for the first time, and I don't know the last time St. John's was there. It feels like a, a long while. That seems like it's something I would do. I would call Rick Pitino and be like, look, come in here, take this money. You have the NIL. Try to rebuild this program. I think that could be an interesting fit, but it's also one where – the baggage, do you do you risk coming out of another I don't necessarily you would call Jawan Howard a um like a bad situation, but a or toxic would not be the correct word, but a an interesting situation to get somebody else who might have that same kind of mentality that could draw some friction as Rick Patino. But I think he could definitely be interesting to go in there, have a blue a blue blood brand around it and build off of. I think he would be somebody you should definitely call for the Wolverines. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. Uh, I think you should, yeah, you should call whoever it is. Now, look, St. John's, I think St. John's also is a, a pretty good spot for Rick Pitino right now. If he can build them uh, back up and get like New York's college basketball right. team back to, to playing, you know, that's, it, that means something more. Yeah. yeah. I kind of, I, I kind of, I do want him to stay there. You know, maybe I'm partial just because St. John's was in coming to America. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> That's funny. No, but I was also I, I was thinking about that man and then I was thinking about the Louisville job last night and, and um how we were talking yesterday and about how Bob Huggins is just constantly kind of lingering around West Virginia and um, they're essentially like wanting to detach everything from him and as far as their coaching search and everything. Like if you're Louisville, why wouldn't you call Bob Huggins? Because you know he's familiar with the area, right? He's coached at Cincy and everything. That just makes all the sense in the world where you keep him geographically close in a basketball powerhouse that's that's feeding off of it and let him try to redeem himself there. That's another one that I was thinking about last night could be an interesting move for Louisville and almost like almost a perfect situation. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see, uh, what all these teams do. Also Stanford fired their head coach, uh, Jared Haas after eight seasons. Uh, so he's, he's out and that's another job that's open. This is going to be, College basketball wise, this is with look. Michigan's open, Ohio State's open, Louisville's open, Stanford's open now. Oklahoma State, Oklahoma West State, West Virginia. That's seven like power schools, right? And I'm probably leaving somebody out. Uh, Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt's open. We said Michigan. I mean, there's a bunch. Yeah, so like we have seven or eight power schools already uh, that are open. And look, Texas might be open. We don't know. Texas probably needs to be open, but I don't I, know that. It I, I don't would. know if it will. Like I, I don't have to like see if they'll give him yeah. one more year and see if he can, you know, um, with some of the guys who graduate out, if he can maybe repair the cut. Like I don't even know if it's a culture problem. It, it is like it might be a culture problem because he seems to blame every loss on something else. But um, you know, or get mad about like oh horns yeah. down or oh uh, the Bro. refs gave Baylor every call or oh like I mean dude like get with like look at you know. The girls' basketball team was still practicing. We were supposed to be there. Like, bro. He's like, a baby. I mean, like, you got to, like, grit it out a little bit, you know? Just <laughs> grit it out. So, um, <laughs> Paxton said, uh, Bayline, or is he too old? I don't know. I would want a younger coach right now. I, I just I would. would, too. Yeah. And Bayline was there before. You know, he was there before. But uh, since he left, I think that's been maybe, like, they haven't been as consistent. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, so, <laughs> I <laughs> I want to read Kyle Visser's. Oh, God, let me go look at this. I do. I'm going to say it. Oh. <laughs> Should I say it? Go for it. Kyle Visser. You can. You what, can listen, say it. No, all of the rest of you have lost the chat room today. <laughs> lost the chat room. Lost it. Lost it. Kyle won. He won it three to, like... I'm marking it down as the on, as the only host on the air today. I am consecrating this one. The winner, Kyle says, keep Patino out of Italian restaurants, and he's a good hire. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Won the chat. Unfortunately, mm. there's no prize for that. There's no, no prize. We'll have to work something up. We'll have to work something. <laughs> like you just, you'll be able, this clip, Kyle, will live in infamy on the internet for all time. So your prize is me talking about you on the internet that the good Lord gave us. 
<laughs> so that's your prize. We'll take our first break right here. We'll come back. We'll talk about a couple other things in sports. A really bizarre story involving Blaine Taylor, uh, who was an assistant coach at Utah State, um, was with the Titans, uh, former defensive back at Arkansas State, the son of former Baylor defensive back Trooper Taylor, who's now the running backs coach at AM. Uh, a very, very sad and bizarre story going on with him right now that involves a murder that happened uh, in November of last year. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, today on the show, Grayson Kernhafer. Then we've got Josh Neighbors. Then we've got Olin Buchanan talking about Trev Alberts. And I'll ask him about Trooper Taylor's status if his son is going to be facing is facing murder charges. What does that mean for him doing his job uh, going forward uh, at Texas A&M under Mike Elko? Trooper Taylor, uh, Blaine Taylor had not started at A&M yet. He just uh, had resigned on March 1st from uh, Utah State and then John Machota will talk Cowboys with us and their approach uh, thus far in free agency. They have released Leighton Vander Esch with a failed physical designation. He is his NFL career is likely over. And Michael Gallup also released today from the Cowboys. Uh, ne neither move should come as a shock to anyone. We're back after this. This is 365 Sports. Rev up your excitement. Celebrate the spirit of adventure during the Jeep Celebration event. Join us at Alan Samuels in Waco as we roll out incredible deals on rugged and reliable Jeep vehicles you love. Seize the moment and drive home in the new Jeep of your dreams. With special financing options and exclusive offers, there has never been a better time to explore the world of Jeep. Hurry in. The savings won't last long. Visit AlanSamuelsDCJ.com and see them firsthand only at Alan Samuels in Waco. Let your adventure begin. Come by. Let's be friends. Stepping into the boots of a U.S. Army officer can add confidence and leadership skills to your son or daughter's career path. See all the things they can achieve in our boots at GoArmy.com. U.S. Army Waco Recruiting Company, 254-598-8131 or 254-776-1543. At Ideal MRI, we feel blessed to be part of the Waco community. We're a small family business here in Central Texas. At times like this, the cost of health care has never been more important. And unfortunately, significant illnesses and injuries still occur. And that's why Ideal MRI is open and here to serve you through this difficult time. So if you need an MRI, ask your doctor about Ideal MRI. You can schedule online in minutes at IdealMRI.com or call 833-IDEAL-MRI. Johnson Realtors guide you seamlessly through the process of buying your dream home or selling your current one. Commercial, farm and ranch or residential, Camille Johnson Realtors can smoothly and successfully lead you through any transaction. With a team of 28 experienced agents who are excited about serving you, Camille Johnson Realtors services the entire greater Waco area. If you're in the market to buy or sell, contact Camille Johnson Realtors 104 Midway Center in Woodway or find them online at www.camillejohnson.com. Camille Johnson Realtors, elegant, charming, Warm. Welcome home. Parenting is full of surprises. You never know what to expect. So after our son was born, I called my Texas Farm Bureau insurance agent to set up a life insurance policy in case something happened to me. Sawyer is now two. And we'll soon have a sister. There's no one else I would trust with protecting my family. Stop by and see our agents at one of our three McLennan County locations. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation. Baylor alumni are more than 160,000 strong. When we all join hands to support our university, we don't just move the needle, we move mountains. Working together, we create life-changing opportunities for students on the field, in the classroom, in the laboratory, and in life for generations to come. So get connected, get involved. Learn how at baylor.edu slash alumni. Let the journey to financial brilliance begin with Jinko's limited time offers. Max your earnings with a Kasasa cash account and get paid monthly with a 4.25 APY. That's $425 annually. Then invest in a 13-month share certificate and earn 4.9 APY. That's $529. Earn cash and outshine the rest. At Jinko, we offer you the sun and the moon. Kasasa based on average daily balance of $10,000. Certificate based on $10,000 investment. See JinkoFCU.org for details. NCUA. 
is 365 Sports. The 3 o'clock hour is sponsored by Waco Custom Marketplace. Meats, sweets, Texas treats, and a cut above the rest. 425 Lake Air Drive, Waco. Welcome back. 365 Sports. I'm going to see how many different smoke puns I can get in on the show today. <laughs> like a bag of red man tobacco, we are smokeless. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> so, <laughs> Craig is off celebrating his 40th birthday, and Smokey is off enjoying some time with his brothers in Florida. So I think let's say we, have, we have six more breaks, Garrett. Yes. Six more breaks. So that means six more smoke puns. Hmm. Six more. I have faith in you. Yeah. I think you can do it. Uh, okay. I want to talk about uh, a basketball thing, then this Blaze Taylor thing, then we'll talk uh, about Bob Thompson, and then we have Grayson in the next thing. Yep. So um, I've been uh, doing a little digging and trying to figure out, like, Scott Drew to Louisville. And there is some smoke around it. There's no denying there's some smoke around it. And I do think that um, that Scott's people are there to listen to an offer Absolutely. and then give Baylor a counter. Scott's always been taking care of it, Baylor. Um, I do think this is an opportunity for him to get something established at Baylor that has not been established yet for NIL to where he won't have to hustle so much of the different things. The game in Detroit that they, they played was an NIL thing. The game that they play in South Dakota, Mm -hmm. an NIL thing. And that was, that was basically him hustling those things and getting them done. Um, Baylor does not have yet like Louisville has right now, like a Michigan or, uh, uh, you know, in Alabama or, or whoever, um, they don't have an NIL endowment. It is um, – basketball is taken care of. There's no doubt about Correct. that. But it is not – the way that the funds are, are created is not quite where they just – it it's created specifically for that. So he would like the university to – make some of those NIL allowances so that he doesn't have to do some of the things that other coaches don't have to do. Like one of the things that Louisville's going to offer him is like, you know, what do you like, you know, we're going to have this NIL collective and you just call them up and say, this guy I, make the deal. Like I, that's, that's, I think, and they've never lost a player. They have never lost a player to NIL, but to be able to take that off his plate a little bit and create a more sustainable NIL future for Baylor uh, basketball and probably the rest of athletics. I think that that would be a big part for him for that would, I think would be the big thing to add. No, while that's all true and everything, I just, what Louisville can't offer him is sustainability. Like they cannot guarantee that they have a conference in the next few years because inevitably we know another shift is coming and it's going to be Florida State and the ACC is going to crumble. Now, how the the chips fall from there, I'm not sure. More than likely, you're going to see Louisville, a pit, eventually, if that were the case, end up more than likely in the Big 12. But they can't offer sustainability for the future. Now, while they can say all that and they have the NIL in place, I think Scott Drew, if he really wanted to, and NIL was ever a concern at Baylor, which I think we've laid out, it really isn't for the basketball team. He's put so many guys in the NBA right now, or not if in the NBA, you're in overseas and stuff. You could rely on those guys to help support the program and continue the, the tradition of excellence that's been established here if need be. I think that's the one thing he could do, and I don't think it would ever come to that, but if push came to shove, that is something he could fall back on, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So I, I mean, look, I, I don't think, I don't think he's going to leave. I don't think he is either. I don't think he's going to leave. But I do think that he is now, uh, for the first time, been given a true opportunity to leverage uh, something bigger for Baylor basketball. Yeah, I just, I that, just feel that, like it came, a, a, it came a little too late with the arena. Like if it would have been before this arena was built, yeah, oh, he'd probably be gone. Um, yeah, gone. So yeah, the arena, like. There are things that help keep him in place Absolutely. and not from being like, look, I'm out of here. Um, you know, like th- this has been great. We've done everything we can. But like if, if they're re- like the national championship and the arena followed essentially right after, like yep. um, 
it would it had already been announced that they were planning on doing it. The national championship essentially locked it all down and allowed them to accelerate through it because then when you've got people excited about it, they're like, "Well, I want to give money to that." Yeah, you know, like let's get that done because we we want to you know capitalize on this momentum that we have at basketball right now. That was that was what they they did. So I do think that you know he's going to listen uh, and he's going to do a lot of like you know. He's he gonna, should. He's, he should listen. You should all like listen. Somebody calls you up, wanting to talk to you for a job. You should always listen, and you should always see if you can. Even if you don't want to leave, you should see how you can make your own situation better. Yeah, I mean, leverage it to your benefit. Yeah. And, I mean, he was. That's the only logical, and that's everything. This is his agents know that. Yeah. Um, you're floating it. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I just I don't see a situation like I can't even think of a job realistically that he would leave for. Like, I just. It, like you laid out yesterday, man, like this is his program. Like he has nobody else to worry about. Like everything here is is him self-made from the ground. Like why would you leave that? No, exactly. I mean, like there's all those things, you know, Baylor's his. Exactly. His. This is everybody who comes after. They're chasing him. They're chasing him. Right. Yeah. Scott Drew built this because it was raised to the ground. Yes. It was to the ground. It is a Bill Snyder like rebuild and maybe even better it's on because level. they won a national title. Yeah. Bill Snyder got close. They got close. They were contending regularly. But uh, and look, Kansas State didn't have scandal to rebuild from. No. Nope. And a murder and nope. all these awful things that happened. Kansas State just sucked. They were they, they lost geography lottery. That's yeah, what happened they, to them. Yeah, but like they were the worst f- football program in college yeah. for a very very long. Like it took Bill Snyder like fifteen years of winning regularly to get them off. Like even doing as well as he was, they were still that bad. Yeah. Like they still were like, well, still dead last. Like you know, you're gonna have to win eight, nine, ten games a lot more regularly to pull up out of that. And they finally. They finally did that. They're still like, again, it hasn't been that long. They're still like all time because they've been playing football a long time towards the bottom as, as good as they've been for a long time. So, all right. Um, Blaze Taylor, um, uh, who is a former Arkansas state football player who had, uh, was about to join the A&M staff, mm-hmm. uh, was arrested and charged with two counts of first degree murder Thursday in connection with the death of his girlfriend and her unborn child. Uh, according to the metropolitan Nashville police department, he had been working, uh, well, she, um, was a Nashville. He had worked for the Titans the year before he had moved to Utah state July 1st last year. Uh, and his girlfriend, Jade Benning, um, They've alleged that he's poisoned his girlfriend, and the uh, the unborn child died two days after the mother. And he had told the nine one one dispatchers that she appeared to be having an allergic reaction. So, very curious to see how that affects Trooper Taylor's status at um, at Texas A and M for at least this season, and what what's going to happen there going forward. Uh, and just a tragedy in Nashville, obviously, and in a very very strange story. I I will never understand situations like this. Um, people make p- terrible decisions on a daily basis. Um, but these situations do, like, get a damn divorce. Like, I, get a divorce, get break something, up. break yeah. up. Um, if, you're, if you didn't want the kid, there's ways around that. There, yeah. You know, like, um, and I know the government – wants to shut down some of that, which is ridiculous. But at the same time, like, th- well, take like the if, steps, if man. You, if you don't want to be a dad, don't be a dad. Exactly. Like, but be afraid, but be upfront about it. Don't be an like, idiot. Do, do your part. Like, that's the thing. It's like, all right, I understand this is going to cost me some money, but I'm going to sign my rights away. Like, there are, there are things you can do. Well, uh, not yeah, just I, that, dude. There are so many people out there who struggle to have kids. And, yeah. you know, it depends on what. Anyway, um, you could adopt. Like yeah. there's there, there's so many options out there. It, yeah. th- these stories are disgusting. Yeah, they they really are. Very 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 much. So that uh, that is absolutely absolutely the case. It's it, so it's very sad. All right, last thing before we go to Grayson uh, here in the next segment, Bob Thompson uh, here on the new college football playoff format. Again, we don't know if it's twelve or fourteen. Correct. We'll talk about it with Josh here uh, at four o'clock. But um, his tweet uh, earlier today. And hold on, let me pull it up over here, Garrett, so that I can. Yeah, the, the eyesight gets you. Yeah, it does. Look, I've I've played the uh, 
I've been playing the 40-year-old game now for almost four years. <laughs> a couple years ago, the reading glasses thing popped up, and uh, I, I didn't handle it well. I Just downhill from there. Yeah, I didn't handle it. <laughs> I, I, I really did lash out at the eye doctor. and I apologize to you, Dr. Shutt. I'm sorry I should not have punched you in the kidneys. Uh, <laughs> no. He's a great doctor. I go to him all the time. He's over it. <laughs> so, uh, Bob Thompson, as I've stated before, don't fall for this new CFP deal being 200% plus higher than the last deal. Comparing the average cost of a 12-year deal to the average cost of a new six-year deal is an improper way to calculate an increase in a rights deal. Too many variables in length, number of games, and their relative importance. The current deal's last year... So the new deal's first year measures the percent increase correctly. In this case, you're looking at a 24 to 28% increase depending on what values you believe for the four new first-round games in 2024 and 2025. Any other calculations are simply consultant math, which is, you know, the consultant comes in and is like, hey, you're going to make all this money. I mean, do this thing that we said that you're paying us to come up and give you a plan. Mm -hmm. So tw still, look, a 28% bump is still nice. But it's far off from 200. I just, I don't. If I, like, if I went and told you, like, hey, I've lost 28 pounds, and you're like, oh, yeah, I've lost 200, I would feel stupid. Well, see, I, I don't even know how logical that would be. Like, I don't understand how you would expect anything to increase 200%. That, I, that number never made any, any sense to me. Logically, what it's seeing, uh, where you got the 24 to 28, yeah, that makes sense. The thing is how you're going to dis disperse that in – it's never going to be equal. Uh, but yeah, anybody who ever thought that it was going to be that magnitude of an increase was delusional to begin with. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, let's take a break right here. When we come back, Grayson Grunhafer, uh, we'll talk a little Baylor basketball with him, and we'll talk about Scott Drew's future, and we'll talk about recruiting, football, spring practice. All the spring practice is next week, right, Garrett? It should be, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Starts up next week uh, for Baylor and what to expect there position battles-wise. Offensive line is going to be a very interesting thing. Very. Um, and how that is, and we'll talk about that next. Grayson Grunhafer, Sikkim365.com. This is 365 Sports. With so many companies and policies out there, it gets so confusing shopping for insurance, and I never know if I'm getting the policy that's right for me. Luckily, I met the team at the Niche Group Insurance Agency. With the Niche Group, you can go to one company and get access to coverage options from many insurance carriers, and you get to speak to a real person about your specific coverage needs. With the Niche Group, I know I'm getting the right coverage at the right price. If you need insurance, talk to the experts at the Niche Group at 1-800-258-8302. Don's Humidor, your home with a 48-foot walk-in humidor with the elite cigar brands from around the world, including the number one cigar of the year, Aging Room, Quattro, Nicaragua. Plus, they have the great brands like Macanudo and Artur Fuente, Rocky Patel, Aston, and so much more. CBD, great for sore muscles, aches and pains, sleep, Vita Dreams, and anxiety, mild depression, general health and wellness. Their staff, very knowledgeable on the subject. If anyone is curious about CBD, ask Carolyn Ashley, Don Schumanor in the Talwa Shopping Center off Valley Mills in Waco. Baylor Scott & White Southwest Sports Medicine Orthopedics, the team physicians for Baylor Athletics, diagnosing and treating all sports-related injuries, including concussions. These specialists also provide orthopedic services for athletes and non-athletes alike. Whether it's knee or shoulder pain, a wrist injury, orthopedic spine care, and even an arthritis and total joint clinic. Trust the doctors Baylor Athletics trust. Baylor Scott & White Southwest Sports Medicine Orthopedics wants to get you back in the game. Waco Custom Marketplace is your hometown grocery store with a full-service butcher shop and bakery. Hi, this is David Smoke. The butcher shop can take your customized orders for seafood, pork, and poultry and custom cut your favorite steaks from bacon wrap fillets, sirloin steaks, bone-in ribeyes, boneless ribeyes, and even prime rib. Cut specifically the way you want, the thickness that you want. They're all delicious. They have Norwegian salmon, mahi-mahi, catfish fillets, sliced ham or turkey, variety of cheese, and several options of sausage 
links, and even regular jalapeno or cheese snack sticks. Fresh chicken breast or whole chickens, sliced bacon, pork chops, and ground beef. Marinated beef or chicken fajitas. And always large briskets and tri-tip available, plus fresh vegetables. So the great product, customer service, and tradition continues at Waco Custom Marketplace, a full-service butcher shop and bakery, open Monday through Saturday. The Bauer family, Waco Custom Marketplace, 425 Lake Air Drive in Waco, or Waco Custom Marketplace.com. This is 365 Sports, powered by Sikkim365.com. Enjoying the show? Hit the like button and subscribe. Welcome back. Grayson, we just talked to him. Uh, he'll be on at 440. Uh, so we're going to kind of roll through. Like it's going to be um, four o'clock hour. It's going to be chock Loaded. full of guests. It's going to be it's going to be a high wire act. I can't wait for it. I'm excited. Uh, another congressionally coordinator, Ross Nellinger, another hearing coming next week in the Subcommittee on Consumer Protection, Product Safety, and Data Security, exploring the effectiveness of U.S. Center for Safe Sport and fulfilling its mission to protect athletes, um, which is um, John Hickenlooper is the senator who is in charge of that subcommittee. And... They're promoting a safe environment in U.S. athletics. So uh, it will examine timely investigations, case resolutions, and transparency and probe opportunities for improvement. Um, okay. So I guess that's more uh, on you know investigating the NCAA. I don't know completely know what they're going to do. Uh, I do know that whatever they do, whatever they start with, uh, won't be what they finish with, right? No, that's what can't. That's what Congress does. It's like, all right, I'm gonna, you know, somebody's gonna get up there and they're gonna be like, oh, this person is from this school, and they're gonna make some kind of stupid joke about like, oh, you beat my school or my school beat yours, and then blah blah blah. I'm gonna ask you a a thing that my team told me to make sure I get out there on television today, and then they'll get down to brass tacks. No. Yeah, they'll just down, dance around everything there. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so uh, a statement today from, and I, it's too late to send it to you, but I do need to please this. The college football playoffs decision to drastically reduce the Pac 12's conference rightful share of CAP revenues beginning in 2026 means that the future financial gap we are challenged to solve may widen significantly. Our commitment to student athletes, however, remains unquestioned, and the excellence of OSU and WSU's athletics programs cannot be denied. We have proven we are up to these challenges. Negotiations with the CFP continue, and we continue to explore all options on behalf of student athletes and our universities. That is from uh, Jatari. Jatai Murthy, the president, and Kirk Schultz, the uh, uh, of, of Oregon State, and Kirk Schultz, the president of Washington State. Uh, They're getting screwed financially. Did you well, see this number? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, yeah, uh, what is it? So right now, according to Heather Dinich, Washington State and Oregon State are expecting to get three hundred sixty thousand each per year in the new contract, which is one fifth. Of the 1.8 million, the group of five schools are going to make, and traditionally uh, in the pack, they were getting six to seven million a year. So I don't know how that's you a, can even a, overcome that. That's a huge budget like, reduction. Like, uh, like, what are you? I thought I saw a thing the other day, and I, I I don't remember who it was. I think it was on three or something. They were talking about the number of players per school. Or it was it was a list of schools who have lost the least amount of players to the transfer portal for football. And one of them was Oregon State. And that took me back because I understand like Damian Martinez is a really good running back and a really good player for them. Um, but I don't know how you can keep a player like him on your roster and build around it if you're at this significant of a shortfall financially because you're not going to – this is a point where you're not going to be able to pay your staff – uh, adequately, you're more than likely like gonna have. I, I just I don't know how you can keep this sustained. Like you're, it can, are you gonna have to cut programs? Uh, here's what they're gonna have to do. The dream of keeping the pack together died with it's that dead. decision. That's it. So you have to find a way to merge with another conference and use that name and try to but, to do. But if that's what you really want, but the bottom line is. What your plan, like, you're going to have to get in another conference in the future. Otherwise, look, you were already going to, like, $6 million down to $1.5 is still a drastic loss yeah. of, of staffing and different things. So, 
you know, why, like, you know, Washington State's basketball coach now is is up for se- is probably going to be up for several jobs and will probably take one. He's going to have to because, like, look, their athletic department budget is is cratering right now because of what happened to them. So, Oregon State and Washington State continue to be on the crap end of the stick, and it sucks for those two schools. They are like, if you want to know who the like most direct victims in all this are. It is those two schools who are geographically challenged and, you know, that that Pullman, Washington and Corvallis, Oregon are just not places that I guess the other schools care about in spite of their success in things like in spite of baseball for Oregon State. Yeah. You know, like this is not like if you were talking about two schools here that like landed themselves in this predicament because they had no commitment to athletics. And you you kind of like wind up there, like Cal did. Yeah, that should have happened I mean, to know, Cal and Stanford. Like, yeah, like you know Stanford always did. You know, but well, that, Cal, yeah, like, more so Cal. Yeah, You're right. but like you know, like some of them do. Then yeah, I can kind of be like, well, this is what happens when you mismanage things. The only thing that Oregon State and Washington State did was fight to keep the pack going because they knew it was their only option. If they thought they had other options, I think they would they would have pushed that more. But they knew. Because don't think that when they knew everybody else, when they knew Arizona was talking to the Big 12, yeah. which everybody knew that Arizona was doing, when they knew Arizona was, don't think that Kirk Schultz didn't pick up the call, phone and call Brett Yormark and say, where are we on the, you know, on the kickball list here of mm-hmm. like, okay, we'll take Arizona, and we'll take Arizona State, we'll take Utah, we'll take Colorado, and they'll be like, well, what about us? And they're like, eh, you know, that not right now. And so, uh, yeah, it, it is... I read a stat today from Bill Connolly uh, about the, he was wrote a column about the greed and we'll try to get him on next week because it was a really, really good column about how the mm-hmm. greed in, in the SEC and big 10 is, is creating ruining this, this, everything. Yeah. It's ruining this. Yeah, exactly. And how it, it can kind of crater a lot of things that we hold dear in college athletics. Um, and it was like 68% of people surveyed said that realignment was a problem in college athletics, but only 18% said it was affecting their enjoyment of watching football. So, (laughs) I mean, (laughs) and he compared it to when like the German soccer fans protested the super league and all of that. And it was like, Oh wow. Like, does this, what has, like he said, is this what has to happen at some of these places where you have to have protests and, and all of that to make sure that you're taken care of and, and not, I don't know. Um, things work a little differently in that corner of the sports world. Mm. But yeah, I mean, like to go to $350,000 a year from 6 million, it's ridiculous. Like not even a graduated drop either. No, like they, like it's just done. Like that is it's, it, it sucks for them. And like, again, what can they do about it? Nothing. The, the, I think the only thing you could do right now, and I kind of think, is take the best conference is, offer you get and go and try to get up to a like. Well, and, and here's the thing: so they'll go up from three fifty to a million six, right? If they get into a conference, a group, like say like they're a group in the, of five, or, yeah, they group like the five. Mountain West conference, yeah, yeah. So they get in the Mountain West, they're going to get a million six, right? Right. So they're going to get a million six. Well, that's still five million less than they were used to getting. So that's that's a lot. So they've got to find ways to make up that gap and. Man, I just don't have the answers to tell you how they do that. I, the only thing I can think of is they're rooting like they have to be rooting like hell for the the power two to break off and leave the ACC and everybody else and the Big Twelve and everybody else in the wind, and then hope that there's a restructure there and somehow what becomes the new format of football gets back to more geographical uh, sense and that they could create some sort of a new conference with some of the pack teams if they decide to go back. But other than that, man, they're screwed. Like, I don't know where you're going to go and how you can get back to being relevant. I, I just don't see it. Yeah, absolutely. Garrett, before we go to Josh, um, I'm, can you bring up the takes app? Uh, thing yes, I sent you? yes, you can. Yes, I can. So uh, this is a really cool thing that I'm involved in. I'm putting the link right I'm now. I'm signing up for this. Yes. Um, this is the, if you go to the link that I just put up in the chat room, you can go to the takes app. The takes app, uh, is, I would describe it at least in my early goings with it is if Twitter 
and Instagram had a child. Okay. And that child was obsessed with sports. I'm down. Okay. And only sports. So there's picks. There's play-by-play for every game. There's uh, real-time content. There's video. There's audio. There's graphics. There's all kind of things on takes. It is really, really cool, and it is is just now getting off the ground. So to be on the ground floor, if you like, and say you're mad that uh, the mod, the actual Lex Luthor has has taken uh, Twitter and renamed it X and has made it kind of stupid and all oh, the things you have now. to do. Like, oh, I can't uh, send this person a direct message unless I pay money uh, to send them a direct message to the overlord of, of that thing. Uh, if you're mad about that, then you can just go to this link that I provided in takes uh, and please sign up for it. Follow me at Paul Catalina. Uh, I'm on there. I'll be making takes all throughout March Madness and beyond. Uh, it's uh, You'll see show stuff on there. You'll see all kind of things that we're going to be able to do uh, with this app. So please go on to takes right now uh, or you know when you can. Don't do it. Like I tell you to do it right now, that seems like I'm making a demand. I don't want to be making a demand. I'm making a request. When you have the time and the brain space to set up your takes profile, and look, here's the thing. You can jar back and forth with people. Like You can look at all this content. It's a really, really cool thing. So please go and sign up for it uh, at, at the Takes app. Uh, and it's really awesome. Like, so you have, there's all these cool things. It's really, really fun. I haven't even like, it might even run it like skew a little too young for me to figure out in less than a day, but I've started to figure it out. Let Emery so, tutor you. Yeah. Emery, like I'll have to get Emery to tutor me. Of course, I'm getting Emery to download it, you know, but I'll, I'll have all that. But yes, the Takes app, go check it out uh, right now uh, on, um, you know, you can go, you can, if you also lose this, just go to my Twitter account at Paul Catalina. There's a link up, uh, the same link up there as well, and find me, Paul Catalina, on takes. Josh Neighbors, after this on 365 Sports. Car's price right, day and night. Average your car in Texas. Trucks will feel red, white, and blue. Average your car in Texas. Cars that zoom. Established in 2007 and independently owned, Alliance Bank Central Texas is committed to helping families and businesses meet their financial goals. From their tellers to their board of directors, they know the importance of superior service and competitive products. Customers have confidence knowing that their financial needs are in good hands. It's your bank, Alliance Bank Central Texas, with two Waco locations, 4721 Bosque Boulevard and 191 Archway Drive on Highway 84 and at AllianceBankTexas.com. Member FDIC an equal housing lender. Developed by Startup Waco, a nonprofit organization, GXG is a program designed to support the entrepreneurial development of Baylor University student athletes through NIL activations. The program helps student athletes maximize their platforms and offers a comprehensive support system for them to create and grow new businesses that not only benefit themselves, but also uplift the local economy. Fans who wish to support student athletes can donate to GXG via the GXG NIL fund baylorbears.com slash gxg contributions to support nil activations through gxg can be made at baylorbears.com slash gxg for more information follow at gxg underscore green x gold on social media and visit the official website www.gxg.startupwaco.com gxg empowering student athlete entrepreneurship and uplifting the local economy through NIL activations. Riverbend Liquor and Wine now has two locations to serve you. The original on Lakeshore Drive and North 19th Street and the brand new spot in downtown Waco at 600 Franklin Avenue. If you're looking for the best in craft beers or local Texas bourbons, then the original is the place to be. And for the latest trends and online phenomenons, head downtown to the Franklin location. Either way, you're going to get the same great variety, customer service, and speedy experience. Check out both locations on their Facebook and Instagram pages. Riverbend Liquor and Wine, Lakeshore Drive and North 19th Street, and now now downtown on Franklin Avenue.
This is 365 Sports, powered by Sikkim365.com. The 4 o'clock hour is sponsored by Boozer's Jewelers, the wedding ring store, specializing in custom jewelry and repair, all in-house. Now here's Paul Catalina. Welcome back. 365 Sports. Josh Neighbors, Big 12 watch over on Crystal Ball College Football, a YouTube station, uh, a channel under our under our umbrella that he is he's doing a fantastic job with, just a fantastic job with, uh, and uh, doing his podcast every day. Uh, and Josh, it is Big 12 tournament time, uh, and the top four seeds have advanced. That's where we are. Um, we had a little bit of interesting first couple days, but... So far, it's gone chalk. Who can benefit, in your opinion, the most from the next two days? It's a great question. Uh, also, Paul, it's nice to be with you. I agree. I am doing a great job. Uh, <laughs> it's a fantastic. Uh, I'll tell you what, though, like this is like the busiest time of year, you know, for for those of us who are also involved in high school sports, high school state championships happening, conference tournaments. Uh, and in college sports too, I live in Arkansas. So baseball is a big deal, especially when basketball sucks. Uh, so that's been crazy. And then Paul, I know it's spring because whenever the weather changes, my, whatever happens inside of me is like, Hey, your voice will go. So, uh, <laughs> like, you know, switching the clock backs, uh, clocks back. And then also my voice going of the two signs, the seasons are changing. Um, so who could benefit the most here? It's a great question. Like Houston's a one. And I think that might be the number one overall. I think there's a big conversation about who's the best team. And I think Purdue, uh, Purdue big loss today. Braden Smith, I haven't seen any update, but he goes down for Purdue. It's huge. And UConn are kind of the two consensus. I think Houston belongs in that conversation. Um, but they're number one. Iowa State, uh, two and three. I mean, the, the two is is there for them. I think they could definitely be a two seed for sure. Uh, Texas Tech, yeah, I think could definitely move. I think they could too. And I think Baylor could move too. But I think Tech... You know, th- there is more doubt about tech and you played Houston. And so, I mean, that's a big chance to, to, to make a, a leap, a jump. And if you beat a Houston and then either an Iowa state or a Baylor in consecutive days uh, on top of what they did to BYU, I mean, three tournament teams consecutively. Uh, yeah. They could definitely help themselves. So I would say Texas tech can, can make the biggest jump. Um, Iowa State can solidify. Baylor can jump a little bit, but Tech is the kind of the most ground they could cover, in my opinion. Yeah, Baylor could certainly wind up on the two line if they win this thing. I, I think so. I think they could be there, especially given the wins they've had down the stretch and the fact that you know, outside of a couple games all year, Baylor's not been blown out. Like they're they're masters at getting beat late or in overtime or just by three, like right at the end. Like that's yes. that like this this. If if not for you know uh, missing shots and taking some bad shots against Kansas uh, late in that game, and you know kind of ease Misi missing an opportunity to take the lead at the end of the Houston game in regulation, like they could be they could have been in contention for the one seed in this tournament. Um, now they're um, they're dealing with something for the first time as a team that I'm wondering if is has gotten in their ears. I don't think there's anything to it substantially as far as him actually leaving. But look, the fans at Louisville want Scott Drew. That's who they want to rebuild their program. They just built him a stadium here. I don't think it's going to happen. But I do think that sometimes that noise can get in people's ears. But he's a very trustworthy guy. If he assures the team he's not going anywhere, I know he'll he hopefully will leverage it to get everything he wants here at Baylor. But still kind of an interesting thing hanging over Baylor, which even with all Scott Drew's success has never really – uh, come up before. Yeah, it's interesting. So it's funny enough. I mentioned me being in Arkansas. This is something that they're dealing with right now too. Um, the one big difference there obviously is that Eric Musselman in Arkansas did not have a good season, but he has been a, a, a winner. Yeah. I mean, I think Scott drew would be a massive dream hire for Louisville. I, I think the one thing that the, the reason why I could see him doing it is like, just if he wants a change of scenery, but Baylor embodies a whole lot of what Scott Drew is about values wise. And I mean, this thing is his baby. Like this program is totally and completely his right. And at Louisville it's, it is yours. But when you have history like Louisville has, like you, you are 
you are a part of that. But like this legacy, I mean, Baylor's basketball legacy, at least, you know, Paul, you correct me if I'm wrong. As far as I'm concerned, like it starts and pretty much ends with, with well, Scott Well, I mean, like this is his program. Like it's, yes. it's never, it's never not going to be his as long as he's he, like alive. Right. Like, right. so it's his, he built it. So, uh, he bet like, you can argue about maybe other sports and it's not a fair comparison because of how they determine their champion. But I mean, as far as college basketball goes, it's the greatest rebuild in the history of college basketball. Yeah. I mean, from where they were to like where they are, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it is very, very impressive. And look, I, I think, um, I would love to see them reach a mountaintop with a different team because that team is one of the best, in my opinion. I mean, it's one of the best teams in my lifetime. I'm 27. And I think just with like the, the unique nature of the, those three guards they had, uh, it was pretty special. So yeah, it's something to think about. And I think a lot of big 12 coaches were all, will always be floated for those jobs. But then you think about the programs they're at these programs put a lot of money, time, care, effort, everything you'd want into basketball. That's why it's the best basketball conference. So I don't think I'm seeing, I, I would not see a lot of coaches leave. I mean, maybe Jerome Tang would leave because of his spat with the university, but like, I don't think he leaves K-State because, you know, uh, like you could argue about the difference of the job, but like Jerome Tang's a really good coach and I think he should stay at K-State because the fans love him. His battle with the administration is what would cost him, obviously, I think cost K-State which would be bad. Um, but yeah, I, I think I feel pretty good with all the big 12 coaches kind of staying where they are. Yeah. Um, I think, I think one of this interesting, of course, he's not going to be a big 12 coach, uh, you know, you know, as soon as the season's over, he's essentially an SEC coach as Rodney Terry. And what happens with him at Texas, their season has been so wonky. Yeah. I mean, like it is just now I didn't expect him to win the big 12, I thought that they would be in contention for like one of the top three teams, but they have never once played like one of the top three teams in the Big 12. They've had good games, but one of the top teams in the league, you know, wins way more than they lose. And they've, they've not done that since conference season started. And they didn't really have that great of a non conference schedule either. Yeah. I, so I think Rodney Terry, like I thought what he did last year was really impressive. And I don't think he did a bad job this year. It's just Max A. Smith and Tyrese Hunter were super inconsistent. And Tyrese Hunter, is, it's been a huge issue for him. He is a very inconsistent offensive player, whether it be number of shot attempts. I mean, you'll like the, the, look at his shot attempts sometimes. He'll have some games where he takes a bunch or some games where he takes four. And I think for them, Dylan DeSue, he has been such a rock. He has been, uh, you could argue, the most consistent player in the league and what he's done, I think, really elevates the – it makes it more impressive because of everything around him has been so inconsistent. They've just needed him game in and game out. And um, I was watching them when they played Houston a few weeks ago, and I know Houston's beat the brakes off a lot of teams in this league. But, like, we saw Baylor, but Baylor, Baylor never led until overtime – but still had a shot at regulation, like you mentioned, to win the game. And like, that's what really good to great teams do. It's like, I mean, it'd be, it would have, that would have been nuts if they were won the game, but it speaks to the fact they've got so many good players in the way they play that they are always in games. Now, once again, they've had close losses and close wins too. Yeah. Right. But um, Texas is not capable of that. Like Texas got absolutely dog walked by, by Houston and they were not as physical. Their guards just got body the entire game and it turned into one way traffic uh, in Houston's direction. And um, that's kind of the thing, like whenever Texas needed a win this year, they got it. I think about that Baylor game they had to get a win. They get the win. And I thought Rodney Terry made a great choice in that game, not calling timeouts. So, like there's a good example of him being a good coach. He's a really good motivator too. So I, I don't think they should pull a plug on him at all. Um, and the way they care about basketball at Texas, like, I don't think they should, to be honest. So I think he's fine, but that team has been really, I want to say massive disappointment, but like, it, 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 I think it's hard to say it's, it's not been a disappointing season for them. Yeah, uh, it, it absolutely has. Uh, Kansas state not going to make the tournament. Um, you know, I don't think it doesn't change. We think I've seen, I've yeah. seen weirder stuff happen, but I think, yeah, conventional wisdom. Yeah, I think the they're, I think they're just like, they're, ju they're, they're going to stay on the bubble. They're not going to get off of it. Like they're just going to, you know, when this thing comes out, they are number one seed, in the NIT. Yeah. They're, yeah, absolutely. The Naquan Tomlin situation kind of undid their season for one and two, look, Jerome Tang rolled in there last year and getting Keontae Johnson, you know, 
to commit there and him being healthy and being such a stud uh, helped them out tremendously. They just did not have that kind of offensive firepower this year. But I'm curious to see what he does moving forward. Should he say, I don't think his fight with the administration is as tooth and nail as it thinks, but I do think a message has probably been sent from his side of, hey, like let's be on the same page about these things moving forward so that it doesn't happen again and that then I, I, I'm not forced to leave a place that I want to be. Yeah, and they had injuries too it affected them. And the Naquan Tomlin thing was so weird. But like you look at their problem, they lack depth. Mm -hmm. They really did lack depth. And also, they did not take good care of the basketball this year. Mm -hmm. uh, the the Kansas game they won. They could have iced that game a lot earlier, but like just could not could not keep the ball. And look, when you when you when you kind of I, I love the way he empowers his players. But like when you let guys just kind of do their thing and uh, you don't have Keontae Johnson and Marquise Noel and you've got a little bit like a, a tier below, like I think Arthur Kaluma is a really good player. I think he had an awesome year. And then also, you know, I really like watching Tyler Perry play and Cam Carter, but those guys did not take really good care of the ball. Last time they turned the ball over 20 times. And like, I always say this, but basketball at some point can become a math equation. If you and the same, you know, you and the other team shoot the same percentage, uh, you know, and you give them the ball 10 more times, they get extra shots. They're going to win the game probably. So I think they kind of lost the math problem a, a few times this year. And I think their lack of depth also caused them to get run out of the building a few times. Um, and, and once again, also, I think they're a team where the non-conference hurt them. I mean, this happened a lot in the big 12, the non-conference schedule was not very good. I, I think the conference is good, but I, I think the non-conference schedule really did hurt a bunch of teams. I think K-State's one of them. And they also did not, the only road game they won in conference, Paul was the game against West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't, that's not a very good win. So they weren't good away from home yeah. and they didn't rack up enough of those. But I mean, once again, like, I don't think Jerome, I think Jerome Tang did a good job this year, given the circumstances. Um, I just think that this roster with the issues they had, it just kind of ended up them not making the tournament. But like, I think this is going to be one of those where you look at his resume, like Wikipedia page at the end. And it's like, well, that's weird. There's, yeah. a, there's a year where they didn't make the tournament. That's that's really strange. Yeah. So no. I think it's going to be the norm. I agree. All right. So two jobs open in the Big 12 right now, Josh, Oklahoma State and West Virginia. What do you, who do you think fits there the best? I think, I think Mike Borton is going to have one hell of a second act in coaching. It just did not work out for him because of, of factors outside of his control uh, at Oklahoma State. But I do think he's a really good coach that, you know, he's, he's going to have that like, oh man, like, you know, Oklahoma State's probably going to kick themselves because he's going to win somewhere eventually. And they're like, ah, Lee, if we could have just seen it through the storm uh, with that guy. But I get, like, the last couple of years has just not been right, and they they probably need a fresh look at things. And then West Virginia, uh, given the Huggins situation, you know, obviously uh, that that's such a, a strange and bizarre thing that they had to come through. So where do you think each side goes? What kind of coach do you think they should look for? Yeah, so um, I would not be surprised if West Virginia – Goes after the uh, the JMU coach. Totally blanking on his name at this moment in time. Uh, oh, Mark Byington. Mm -hmm. I think that would be probably pretty smart to do. Although I'll tell you what, James Madison. This is pretty consistent throughout like all their athletics. They their commitment. They have made some serious commitments to to their athletics. They really do care. So I mean, I think it'll be competitive to try to keep him. Um, yeah, I, I think West Virginia is is a program where there's they are like modern used to winning. And I've made this point too. Huggins was not though. Like, it wasn't like Huggins was going to final fours. Like that Deuce McBride team, in my, in my opinion, massively underachieved. I, I thought the Culver McBride team should, you know, I think they had um, the kids, Sean McNeil as well. Like that team should have actually made it further. I mean, that's a really good three point shooting team that could not be, it looked like they never seen a zone against Syracuse. So, like I know this year was really bad, but it wasn't like, and then they lost to Maryland last year. And I didn't think Maryland was that good either. It wasn't like this program was like killing it, killing it, killing it. No, they should, they, they feel like they should be in the tournament every year. I get that. Um, I think a lot of the names that you're hearing, you know, like Dusty May, FAU, try to throw a lot of him. Uh, Abdur Rahim at USF, obviously, I think you'll get, you know, a, a pretty good look. Uh, if you could swing, and I think this is the, I think Oklahoma State and West Virginia should toss as much cash as they can at these two guys. Uh, or this guy, Will Wade. Uh, if we don't care about, I mean, 
if we don't care about somebody's past, and here's the thing, honestly, like what Will Wade did now is like actually acceptable. So he's, it's kind of fine. Um, I would go after Will Wade. I mean, I, 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 it's, it's pretty obvious the guy can just coach, absolutely coach ball. I mean, he shows up at McNeese and I know they're getting good players too, but like they've just run that league, the Southern, I think it was, whatever it is, so con Southern conference, they've done it. They've lost three games. So I would try and get Will Wade because I think he is, I don't know they gave him an extension, but like out of the coaches that are out there that makes the most logical move to revisit the power five. Yeah. I would say Will Wade's the guy I would go after the best. And I, I want to say on the, on the point about Mike Boyden, um, when I worked at Sirius XM, he would always come. He, he's the only coach who would come on every single week mm-hmm. and he would do a, and, and, and he just got it and he understood young people. And like, he actually cared about young people and it was invested in like their success as people. Um, and I think him as a pretty, he's only 40, he's in his forties. Yeah. I think he as a young guy understood that. And I, I always really valued that about him. And also he had to, the NCAA, they treated Oklahoma state. The case was really unfair. The circumstances were really unfair. And all the reception you're seeing online, there's no like, thank God coach is gone. It, it, they needed to, they needed to make a change just to, I, I think, freshen things up. He had to wear a bad situation. I think he'll get another chance somewhere else. I think he'll do really well somewhere else. And I think that Oklahoma state needed to change the scenery. And I, and I have not seen anything negative about him and nobody has anything bad to say about him. It didn't go their way. Um, and that's, that is, part of the job, but he's young. And I think you're right. I think there's a second act coming for a, a Mike Boyden. Look, I'll, I'll tell you right now, and it would probably not because of the way he ended Oklahoma state, but as a Florida state alum, if Leonard Hamilton retired tomorrow and he might, I mean, they're, they're done. Their season's over. Uh, but if Leonard Hamilton retired tomorrow and they said, we're going to hire Mike Boyden, I would tell all my friends, Hey, don't be mad about this. Like, yeah, he, he's going to be motivated. Like he can get, like he got Kate Cunningham. He can get guys, you know, yes. you've got NIL, you've got all these things. What happened at Oklahoma state was such a confluence of events outside of his control that he could not ultimately overcome. Uh, if that, if the NCAA doesn't randomly pick on him, which I mean, in the last month, we've seen them completely get castrated. I remember uh, he had to go do a, he had to go to a meet with them. I think the day before a game, I, I think they played Kansas Yeah, and he had to go meet with the NCAA the day before that. And it's like, how, you know, out of the blue, I believe too. And it's just ridiculous to, that he had to deal with that. And then they had a ton of roster restrictions too. Yeah, absolutely. They had like, yeah, they had these roster restrictions. They had all these things happening. If he could have, and that's the thing the NCAA did had he, he was only going to have Cade for one year. Everybody knew that, but had he been able to, based on Cade Cunningham being on that roster. And they added really good players around Cade Cunningham too. They, they yeah. were good. Um, and if you remember, they beat Baylor in the big 12 tournament. It wasn't close. Uh, and Baylor won the national championship that year. But had he been able to build the last couple of years off of that, like a normal coach would, like any other coach in the big 12 would have been able to, we wouldn't be talking about this right now. We just wouldn't be talking about it. Bottom line. So yeah, they, they played a lot of young guys this year too. Like yeah. I could see that group the, getting better and better. The, just this, the, but out. this was the, like, this was the result of all that. This season yes. was like yes. where it all, all comes like every, every time the credit card payment comes due, this was, this was that for them. Well, Josh, uh, always appreciate it. Uh, having you on, let's talk uh, real quick though. I want you to know uh, the CFP, obviously widening gap financially between everybody, Yay, Oregon state and Washington widening. state have been absolutely effed in this financially they're gonna get three hundred fifty thousand dollars each um which is not enough to fund an athletic department uh in anything like you like a, if you had like a three-person chess team it's it's not even enough for that uh <laughs> just just really bad uh what they got what are your thoughts on the new format the way they've gone about it and what the non-power two super two trademark craig smoke uh can do going forward I think the people in charge of college football are really lucky that the transfer portal and NIL have happened when they did, because all the fans that I know that don't cover and they don't, they have jobs, they have lives that don't understand, you know, aren't in the nitty gritty the way we are, Paul, they blame NIL and the portal for a lot of the way they feel about college sports. And it's not positive. This is what's wrong. The people who are in charge of college sports are not taking care of it. And I understand there's going to be some kind of financial gap. And I'm not saying the SEC doesn't deserve more, whatever. 
right? But like the SEC wins over the Big Ten. Uh, the, the, the SEC wins over the Big Ten, but the Big Ten makes the most money television wise. Those big brands, the, that's that's kind of what drives the, sh the ship. Mm -hmm. So I, I get that and I understand that. But with, with the if we're going to keep doing this widening gap thing, like we're basically going towards an NFL model for playoffs. Mm -hmm. That's essentially what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I don't even know why we're going to have conference championship games. It, it makes no. no sense. Some of these teams would probably like to have one less game, one less game of wear and tear, one less chance to get injured. Uh, the conference championship games make money, but like that is the real problem. It's not NIL. It's not the portal. It's every decision's being made for money. And here's the problem. You cannot have a situation where these kids are not making money because the amount of money that is being made off their backs is insane. It yeah. is ridiculous between ticket sales, between merchandising, between television contracts for both the conferences and the CFP. It is absolutely ridiculous. And, and I think coach con, I think coach contracts reflected that mm -hmm. uh, mostly, right? It's like Josh Heupel makes $9 million. Who are you bidding against Tennessee? Nobody. We just gave him a massive pay raise for no reason at all. Yeah. And so I think like, I think people are blaming the NIL and the portal for what they feel. No, it's because the people and it's, it's because USC is about to play Rutgers next year in Indiana and it's a conference game and yeah. USC is no longer going to play Arizona and Arizona state and they're not going to play Cal and Stanford and, and Oklahoma and Bedlam's gone now that's, that's gone. And Texas is not going to play Texas tech. They're not going to play TCU. They're not going to play Baylor. They're not going to play Houston. They're not going to play any of those schools. They'll play A&M again, uh, you know, again, but also, Hey, they're good to go to South Carolina. That feels special. Doesn't it? Yeah. No, it, it at all. And guess what? Most of the schools involved, all it's going to mean is that your assistant AD is going to make more money now. You know, uh, you're going to have bigger facilities. Great. Well, you're still South Carolina. You're still Missouri. You're still Kentucky. You're still Purdue. You're still Illinois. You're still Indiana. And so I think like this gap is going to widen for big 12 schools that have great fan bases. And honestly, Paul, the, fa the fans are going to pay for it because they're the ones that at schools like Kansas state and Texas tech are going to be relied upon to help get recruits mm -hmm. and help and help you know, donate more money to try and compete at the highest level because the distribution of wealth is going to be such is such that it's not going to well, be tenable. Well, look, I don't think you're also going to be able to, even in the big conferences, because they've got to distribute money where everybody makes it, you're not going to have $3 million a year offensive coordinators anymore. Like that's over because you, yeah, it's done. That's yeah, completely that's done. done. Like it's going to the quarterback and, and again, yeah, the kids are going to be, the kids will be employees here. And like, about, I mean, yeah, it's coming. I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely coming. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and look, Craig made that point yesterday of like, you know, look, these two conferences have a bunch and they've, they've got all the good rivalry games, right? They've got almost all the good rivalry games, you know, the, the big, big, big ones. The problem is they also have a lot of games that nobody gives a crap about. Like, you know, if USC and Indiana played a non-conference game, you know, on September 5th, you know, to start out the year, I might watch that going, all right, you know, I want to see how USC looks, but I'm not going to be like, oh, boy, you know what they say about USC and Indiana? So goes yeah, I mean, the national when, championship. Yeah, watch out when Maryland plays Oregon. That's a huge one. I mean, <laughs> yeah. like, you better watch that's, the hell out. That, that's Under Armour versus Nike, buddy. That's what that is. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Right. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of brands, right? I mean, that's that's like the that's that's the biggest, most fun part because those two schools have nothing in common, yeah. right? I mean, besides that. <laughs> yeah, do you think yeah, it's yeah. Do you think the CEOs of Under Armour, if they won that game, are to call like suck it, Phil? <laughs> yeah. I mean, them with their ridiculous Maryland flag logos. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing they have ever Nike. Absolutely. Josh, always love it, man. Thanks for hopping on with me today. Josh Neighbors, Big 12 Watch. Go like and subscribe uh, to that channel and to his show uh, so you can see those things every single day. When we come back, Owen Buchanan. We'll talk a and with him, Trev Alberts, and uh, Buzz Williams may have gotten the Aggies in the tournament. Uh, they're on the bubble right now. Joe Lenardi has one of them as the – I think he has them as the last team in uh, in the NCAA tournament as it stands right now. If he got them in the tournament – does that save him, or are they worried about him maybe jumping ship, going somewhere else? A lot of Oklahoma State rumors that they might take a run at Buzz Williams, and maybe, uh, which I think is look, he's a good coach. It just has he not. Is a good coach. It just hasn't hit A and M how they they thought it would, uh, for sure yet. But he's got him in the tournament last year. He's about to get him in the tournament again after kind of a rocky uh, start to the year. So we'll see about that next. Owen Buchanan, TexAgs.com. This is three sixty five Sports.
Samantha Duvall, TexasBeefHouse.com with me, David Smoke. And tell you what, you guys keep rolling along. You do have yet another date, correct, for an online and live auction. Yes, our next online and live auction will be Thursday, April 25th. We've discussed how this has been unique and how people have reacted to it. Has that momentum continued as you've done more? Yes, it's kind of half and half. We'll have a good amount of people there that are from the area. And then we have probably 40% that we ship out and everybody that I've delivered locally to has talked about how much fun they had and they want to know when the next one's going to be. We've gotten great feedback from the people that we've shipped to. They're all just so excited about this event and they can't wait for the next one to happen. Premium grade East Texas beef. Customers don't have to go out and buy their beef. TexasBeefHouse.com from their family and their ranch to your plate. TexasBeefHouse.com Automatic Chef Canteen is a full-service micromarket vending and office coffee provider with state-of-the-art vending equipment, a wide variety of products, and offering custom-fitted micromarket vending office coffee solutions for your employee break room. You want a full break room solution and a workplace oasis? Well, Automatic Chef Canteen, locally owned and operated for over 50 years in Central Texas, also includes in-house mechanics on call 24-7 for fast, reliable service and maintenance. Automatic Chef Canteen, 6900 Imperial Drive in Waco or online at automaticchefcanteen.com. Our good friend Brad Boozer, Boozer's Jewelers here at 365 Sports. Now, Brad, uh, people who watch uh, and listen to our show know I'm a double-time customer for you, engagement ring and wedding band, and you guys do that great, but that's not all you do at Boozer's Jewelers. Absolutely. And uh, I always like to say, you know, it's a new year. It's a great way to start the year out. Uh, go through your old jewelry. Go through your wife's jewelry box. Go through anything you're maybe not wearing, something that's broken, something that you're not using. We do a, a massive amount of custom work. We can take your old jewelry, old diamonds, old watches, and we can convert it into something special for you and make a one of a kind piece of jewelry. Uh, and if that's not something you're interested in, uh, a great thing is we can turn that into cash. So we buy gold, we buy diamonds, we'll buy Rolex watches, any kind of heirloom jewelry, anything that's maybe passed down to you. Boozer's Jewelers, where do they find you, Brad? We're at 1025 North Valley Mills Drive, right on the corner of Lake Air Drive and Valley Mills with the big clock on the corner. This is 365 Sports. Text us at 254-339-1122. The text line is sponsored by Riverbend Liquor and Wine with the most extensive variety of craft beer in Waco. A hidden gem on Lakeshore Drive and 19th Street. Welcome back, 365 Sports. Paul Catalina, if you would like to send out smoke signals... They would go and answer because both the Smokes are out today. Craig's celebrating his 40th birthday and Smokey down uh, celebrating some time with his brothers in Florida. Uh, and uh, they're just an adorable lot, the four of them. Uh, they sent us a picture earlier uh, smoking some stogies. But Owen Buchanan, a friend of the show. Uh, we got to get T-shirts for people that are official friends of the show. Or like hats, that. buttons. I don't know. Buttons, that seems to maybe be out. That's kind of an old style thing. He doesn't work at TGI Fridays. But uh, Olin Buchanan, TexAgs.com, joins us now. And, and Olin, um, I do want to talk about this at the end, uh, or maybe we can get into it now before we get into to, um, to Trev Alberts and how huge news that is for a and But the uh, Trooper Taylor son, uh Blaze Taylor arrested for murder today, and obviously he won't be joining the staff. What does that mean for Trooper Taylor going forward, having to deal with such a tragic situation involving his son? Well, I can only imagine. Um, you know, it's a tragedy uh, for all those involved. And, you know, if his son is guilty, uh, and let's wait for it all to play out, you know, like you should with everybody. But, um, you know, as 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 heinous as that, a crime as that would be, or or it is, that's still his son, mm -hmm. and he loves his son. I'm sure I, I haven't met Trooper yet, but I'm a father, and I know that uh, you know I'm always going to love my son, and I'm always going to want the best for him. And if something like this would happen, God forbid, uh, it would be heartbreaking, and I, I'm I'm sure it would have some kind of uh, you know, effects, uh, actually in times like that, maybe the best thing for you is working. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, I can't, you know, I can't 
pretend to to really know yeah. uh, because thank God I've never had to go through anything like that with my board. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, Owen. I uh, just wanted to get that one out of the way first because it's a, a really confusing and difficult thing to talk about. Uh, so to the big news of the week for AM, uh, getting Trev Alberts away from his alma mater, which, you know, for Nebraska really um, – is, is, is wild because they've lost their president. They've lost their athletic director. They were very instrumental in getting Matt Rule there. Now Trev Alberts takes over a program at AM that just made a football hire, so he doesn't have to worry about that uh, in Mike Elko. But uh, this was a big swing and a big get uh, for them to replace Ross Bjork. What's been the reaction so far uh, in Aggieland? Uh, I think uh, for the most part, it's, it's, it's positive. But I think... Uh, you know, a lot of folks kind of scratch their head and say, now, now remind me again what an athletic director does. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, beyond raising money and maybe hiring and firing a coach, um, look, the easiest job in the world has got to be raising money for a athletics from Aggie. Uh, Aggies are, uh, they love their program. They'll contribute if you, if you give them a reason to. Uh, I think that what may, from what I understand, I haven't met Trev yet, um, but uh, what made him really attractive is that uh, they, they've made some really uh, positive steps and done some good things toward NIL, uh, some innovative things. I understand they have a, a, a building where, in an NIL building, right? I don't know this, but that's what I've been told, where, you know, of course, you can do all the shopping you want to for the players and their merchandise, but you also have a place in there where you can go and, uh, uh, you know, if you're just somebody that wants to make a contribution, you're not a million dollar guy, but you want to make a contribution, you know, there's a place to go to do so. And, uh, uh, you know, there's, uh, I don't know. And I haven't been up to Lincoln and gosh, I don't you know, 15 years, but from what I understand that, uh, they've done some really positive things in NIL and A&M wanted an athletic director that understood or had a, had a good, good feeling on what the future of college football is going to be and college athletics is going to be. Uh, we all think, I think we all know that NIL is going to be a big part of that. So somebody that's active and, and innovative along those fronts and they feel like Trevor Alvin is that guy. So, uh, uh, you know, I, but I do think Aggies have learned to, uh, uh, unfortunately to have to uh, uh, take a wait and see appro- approach on everything because too many times they've been sold the bill of goods that, uh, this hire or that hire uh, is is going to make the big splash that uh, maybe, you know, doesn't come. So uh, uh, I think they'll welcome Trev, Trev with open arms. But, uh, again, we'll take a wait and see uh, approach to just how much they should celebrate this hire. Uh, is it um, kind of like, you know, there's – unless you are Ohio State where Ross Bjork went – there's really not many programs that there's not at least one other job that's bigger than you, right? And A&M's a gigantic program. So there's not many. Like, there's not many jobs that you can do that. You know, Scott Woodward went back to LSU because, I mean, he's an LSU guy. You know, uh, Ross Burke went to Ohio State because it's Ohio State. Um, is it a little troubling that they have not been able to keep an athletic director? And this is, like, kind of the history of A&M where – um, you know, since they stopped hiring coaches to do this job, they've not been able to really ki- um, keep an athletic director for a very long time. Well, number one, I think that uh, issue may be um, way up the, the, the chain of command. <laughs> and, uh, you know, maybe there's a, a problem there. If you'll look at A&M, yeah, you've had a lot of athletic directors. You've had a lot of changes in the president's department, too, mm-hmm. or at the president's position, too. And then you start saying, okay, well, what's been an area that where well, there hasn't been any change? And if you look at that and say, okay, you know, maybe there's an issue there. That said, um, I think Ross, I, hey, for all I know, he would have gone to Ohio State anyway. But I think with the whole way that the, you may recall the whole way that the, the football coach search came off and Ross uh, thought, Obviously, erroneously, that 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 he uh, had the power to make the hire of a football coach on his own, and wanted to hire Mark Stoop, and uh, uh, the board of regents balked, obviously, um, which 
I understand they're blocking. Why are you going to fire a coach that has a suspect offense to hire a coach that has a suspect offense? Um, uh, so I think uh, Ross moving on was probably uh, what both parties wanted. Oh, and now that uh, one of the things that Trev Hours is going to deal with uh, pretty much right away is the situation with the basketball team. They're about to probably make the tournament. Right now, they're, Joe Lenardi has them as the last <laughs> team in. Uh, Buzz Williams got them in the tournament last year. Obviously, in 2021, uh, I think they were egregiously left out of the tournament, especially the way that they'd finished that year on an absolute tear uh, and then did not get in the tournament. What do you think happens with Buzz Williams going forward? Because there are jobs open out there that will probably try and hire him and be like, hey, you can win here better than you can win at AM, and uh, and you know, maybe get out of a, a situation that might be a little too up and down from what he had expected. Well, you know, if it's up and down, you know, whose fault is that? His. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, look, I think a, look, I don't think Buzz is in any trouble. But if he uh, decides that he wants to look around and go and maybe go somewhere else, I, I think A and M would uh, would say okay, you know, best of luck to you, and you know, let's see what we can find here. Because quite frankly, uh, if you're if you're feeling confident that they're in the tournament, um, and I know, and apparently Joe Lenardi is too, uh, I'm not. I think yeah. they, I think to feel absolutely. To feel confident, I think they have to beat Kentucky here in about an hour, starting in about an hour and a half. Um, but, uh, you know, here's the deal. Uh, and this, I, I don't mean to come off like I'm being, like I'm trashing Buzz here because I'm not. Uh, but I, I'm, you know, just facing, you know, stating facts. If they don't get in the tournament this year, that'll be uh, one tournament appearance in five years and no tournament victory. And he's paid among, my understanding among the top 15 coaches in the country and you know quite frankly that's not you don't you don't pay for one appearance and no wins you don't pay like that and on top of that you if you you know climbed up on a mountain if there was one in college station looked all around you you would see baylor going to the tournament and houston going to the tournament and probably tcu and i guess texas and maybe texas tech right and uh even who who else did I see might, might get in? Sam Houston. <laughs> so yeah. all around you, there are teams uh, in our state going to the tournament. And, you know, maybe A&M will play their way in. Now, yeah, they probably got shafted a little bit two years ago. But the fact is, if you had not had an eight-game losing streak, you wouldn't have had to worry about that. Mm -hmm. And they may, you know, they may sneak in. But the fact is, if you had not had a five-game losing streak after – after beating, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Tennessee, uh, and that losing streak being to a lowly, you know, including losses to a lowly Vanderbilt and Arkansas, you know, you wouldn't have to worry about it. So, um, I, again, Buzz is in no trouble. Uh, if he if he's not the coach at A&M next year, will be I, I believe it'll be because he doesn't want to be. He's in no trouble. So, um, but again, uh, if if someone if another program pursued him and courted him, I don't think a and would try to stand in the way. They gave him a, a raise and extension, I believe, uh, last year. So um, if he decided that ah, this is the place for me, I think they'd say, you know, again, all right, best of luck to you, and we'll find somebody that wants to be here. And maybe they'll get you into the tournament more, more than once uh, in five years, and maybe the next guy will win a tournament game or two. Olin Buchanan, TechSags.com. Olin, thanks so much for hopping on the show. Appreciate it. Have a great weekend. All right. Thank you so much for having me. All right. When we come back, Grayson Grudhafer, Sikkim365.com. This is 365 Sports. It was broad daylight. I stepped into a gas station for five minutes to grab a snack, and just like that, my car was broken into. They made out like a bandit. My laptop, my phone, everything. I called my agent to see what could be done, and he restored my faith in humanity. My claim was processed so quickly, and I was able to recover my losses. Stop by and see our agents at one of our three McLennan County locations. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation.
Thank you for calling your local Marco's Pizza. We're turning up the heat with our new Reaper Cheesy Bread. Fresh, house-made dough is topped with a spicy cheese blend infused with jalapeno, habanero, and Carolina Reaper peppers. At only $5.99, this limited-time product is a hot deal. Add it to your order while you can. A Marco's team member will be with you shortly. Marco's Pizza. Pizza lovers get it. And that offer on the Reaper Cheesy Bread is available right now at any of the five Marco's Pizza locations in Waco, including Bell Mead, China Spring, Robin, in Woodway and Hewitt. Order online at Marcos.com. Call for a pickup or delivery. Marcos Pizza is turning up the heat with their all-new Reaper cheesy bread with fresh, hot house-made dough topped with a spicy cheese blend infused with jalapeno, habanero, and Carolina Reaper peppers. And only $5.99 and for a limited time only. Marcos Pizza, the fastest-growing pizza brand in America. Five locations in Waco. And the new Reaper cheesy bread. Marcos Pizza. Pizza lovers get it. Established in 2007 and independently owned, Alliance Bank Central Texas is committed to helping families and businesses meet their financial goals. From their tellers to their board of directors, they know the importance of superior service and competitive products. Customers have confidence knowing that their financial needs are in good hands. It's your bank, Alliance Bank Central Texas, with two Waco locations, 4721 Bosque Boulevard and 191 Archway Drive on Highway 84 and at AllianceBankTexas.com. Member FDI. I see an equal housing lender. Stepping into a new pair of boots is great, but stepping into the boots of a U.S. Army officer can also add confidence and leadership skills to your son or daughter's career path. There are more than 150 occupational specialties to help them find the best fit for their future. See all the things your son or daughter can achieve in our boots at GoArmy.com. U.S. Army Waco Recruiting Company, 254-598-8131 or 254-776-1543. This is 365 Sports. The Sikkim 365 app is brought to you by Alan Samuels Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat. Come by. Let's be friends. Grayson Grunhey for Sikkim365.com, who is uh, about to go to rehearsal dinner. Jack is at a wedding. Grayson's at a wedding. Garrett and I, uh, Craig's all celebrating his birthday. Yeah. Again. Uh Smokey's not here. He's with his brothers. Uh, well, at least you got a homeboy coming in tonight. Yeah, I got my, my best friend from growing up coming in tonight. I have that uh, going for me. But, uh, you know, like all these people celebrating things, and, and we're not there. Just but, left out. All yeah, right. just left out. So Grayson Grunay for Sikkim365.com. Grayson, Baylor versus Iowa State tonight. Uh, Iowa State, the only big team in the Big 12 they didn't beat was Baylor. And they, they think they thought they had them on the ropes, especially after Scott Drew got ejected in that game. But Baylor came back and won it uh, in, in kind of spectacular fashion in the second half. Uh, how do you expect this one to go tonight, especially given that the way that the game started last night? It, like I said earlier in the show, if you like made baskets, that game in the first half was absolutely not for you. Well, I mean, if you don't like made baskets, I mean, you, you talked about last night's game. I mean, tonight's game, I feel like it's going to be very tough to make a basket in that game. I mean, it, it felt like a lot of the schools in the Big 12, just from the games, um, watching various games and just seeing how many were very lopsided, um, it felt like one team was shooting the ball well and then the other team wasn't. But then on the flip side, you also had low-scoring games, I mean, to be honest with you. And so – um, I wonder if part of that is just adjusting to the neutral site. Um, I wonder if part of that is just you're so familiar with your opponent that it's like you've seen them play all these conference games, and now you get into this matchup, and it's like, oh, we know exactly what they're trying to do. Um, these teams just know each other so well. And I know Iowa State and Baylor only played each other once, but they have so much game film from uh, their games throughout the entire season. And that specific game that you brought up, Paul, I mean, you know, Baylor controlled that game for large stretches of it, um, but it was very ugly, very low scoring. And then, like you said, you know, Iowa State made it all the way back and actually, you know, hit a buzzer beater after time expired. But uh, it was a very, very good game. And I I'm very excited to see kind of how things play out tonight because I think it's a big game for both teams. You know, Baylor still has an outside shot, in my opinion, at uh, getting a number two seed, uh, which would be huge. Iowa State is pretty much kind of in that same situation where I think whoever wins tonight is probably a two seed. I think the loser could still get there, 
Um, but I have a pretty good feeling that's probably just going to be one of those teams being on the two seed line. Grayson, uh, Scott Drew and Louisville rumors will continue to persist until he 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 doesn't take the job or or. Or which I, you know, I think we all agree would be at an over. He does. Uh, I do think he he is going to, and his agents will leverage this into a better deal for him. Which I don't really even think it's totally about salary. I think it's probably about some ancillary things that Baylor maybe doesn't have in place yet. But could you imagine Scott Drew taking another job given everything that's happened here at Baylor and that it is his program? You know, I think most people would agree with this. I think it feels like Scott Drew is going to be a Baylor lifer. I just feel like this is his program. Like, it is his program. You know, this, this is, when you think about Baylor basketball, you think about Scott Drew. And there aren't that many programs where you can say that. And so I really think this is an opportunity for Scott Drew to build a legacy here and turn Baylor into, um, you know, more than just a new blood and maybe turn them into a blue blood at some point. Now, that's going to take a lot. I mean, you got to win a lot of games to get to the point where I consider you a blue blood. Um, but what they've done, especially over the last you know four or five years, has been extremely impressive. And I think they're at a point now with the new arena and just things that are so positive and things going in the right direction, I just feel like it would be really weird um, for him to leave and, and take a different job. And so I, I really don't see him... Uh, ever doing that to be honest with you and so I'm curious how this plays out I'm curious if he takes a bigger contract if he decides to um, you know up that deal and like you said maybe there's just little things that he wants to change but I think in general he's worth every dollar I mean he's been awesome for Baylor and Baylor's been awesome for him it's, it's a match made in heaven yeah I mean the state like I know it's not Scott your stadium but it might as well be right like you know the if it was going to happen eventually, but if they didn't win in 2021, it would not have happened as fast as it did. Like it, it, it certainly 2021 moved it to the front, like allowed it to skip all the other projects along the way as bad as they wanted it. I agree. And, and, you know, I think that that championship really, it, it gives you a path, right. To having a program that is championship caliber and having a program that you can say, you know, we won a national championship here. And that's huge because you want to make sure that you have that path to actually get there. You have all the resources you need to get there. And I know Louisville fans and people that write about Louisville have been, you know, writing all kinds of stuff about, oh, the NIL they can offer Scott Drew and, oh, the, the, the money they can offer him. And that's great. But, I mean, look at what, how Baylor's been recruiting. Look at how Baylor's done in the transfer portal. They're not having a hard time getting guys to come here that can help them win basketball games. So I really, again, I, I don't see a reason why he would leave. He's got plenty of resources at Baylor, and those are only going to get better in my eyes. Absolutely. All right, football recruiting now. Grayson, what do you see going on? What are the next big moves as we get into spring football? Well, I mean, it kind of depends where you want to start. I mean, I, I think that a lot of local fans and a lot of people who follow you know, the local Waco area are probably thinking about a uh, Lorena defense tackle Jackson Blackwell right now. And he's a guy who won defense line MVP uh, at the Under Armour camp and then got a Baylor offer. Uh, he also got Texas Tech and Houston on the same day. And so it's been very interesting to kind of see his rise. I got to see him in person, a really good prospect. He's about six, three, 310 pounds. Um, and just projects very well, and he competed extremely hard and is a guy that truly went out there and earned an offer from all the schools that are interested in him. And that's really cool. You know, you get a lot of guys who just, oh, good tape, or, you know, they went out and tested well, and then they get an offer. But this guy truly did not have, I mean, I think Nevada was his only offer. He goes out to Under Armour and really puts his name on the map. It was very impressive, and I know a lot of people are very excited for that. So, I know he's one to keep an eye on for sure. Baylor's in a good position there. That Baylor's his dream school. So I think he's a guy to definitely keep an eye on. Outside of that, you know, official visits are getting scheduled. Um, a big one that popped yesterday was, and we had his name, he was going to take an official visit, but Fort Bend Hightower uh, cornerback, Cade Phillips, he's a four-star guy, and he's going to take an official visit to Baylor in April uh, which is going to be a really interesting April official visit. Baylor hasn't really done that traditionally. 
but they're trying to get a lot of guys in as many as they can. And guys who can't take an official visit in June are going to take an official visit on that date. Uh, it's April 26th, so right after the, uh, the spring game. And it's a really big one because it's one where they get to get guys in who are their June is booked, but they're able to get guys in who can visit that weekend. It's a kind of an elite one. They got three four star guys coming that weekend, including Cade Phillips, who officially announced that he's going to take his official visit that weekend as well. Uh, a lot of guys that they're in on right now, the 2025 class has a lot of positive momentum. Uh, Max Granville, another four star edge. Uh, he set his official visit date for that April weekend as well. Um, so they're really loading up. And I know the staff's really excited about the 2025 class. You can see that all over Twitter. Um, but the start they have with commits and the guys that are interested in visiting, I mean, they're off to a great start. It's been really, really intriguing and fun to watch. And honestly, frankly, surprising based off the season that they just had. Uh, but they've revamped a lot of things, and kids are really excited about the program right now. All right, Grayson, enjoy the wedding. Uh, we will talk to you again next week when you're you're not about to go eat uh, crab legs at a rehearsal dinner. So, <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate it. All right, Grayson Grunhafer, Sikkim365.com. When we come back, John Machota of The Athletic joins us to talk Cowboys. He's, he's in demand today, so I had to like move him around a little bit. This is 365 Sports. Cars price right One size fits all. That may be all right for an adjustable belt or cheap sunglasses, but when it comes to your financial needs, no one wants a one size fits all strategy. Ben Erlinson, your Edward Jones financial advisor, knows that his most important goals are yours. That's why he takes the time to understand your needs, knowing you. That's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. Ben Erlinson, 100 North 6th Street in Waco, 254 759 8533. Edward Jones, member SIP. Petty Clinic Men's Healthcare in Woodway is now proud to offer you men an exceptional weight management body sculpting product called semaglutide, also known as Ozempic or Wegovy. Semaglutide is an FDA-approved weight management medication. Once-a-week injections of this powerful medication offers an average body fat weight loss of 20% within the first year of treatment. In addition to body sculpting, semaglutide also normalizes blood sugars and has the clinical research proof of reducing blood pressure, cholesterol, stroke, and heart attack risk. If you're like most men and you have stubborn fat that will just not respond to typical diets and exercise, then help is finally here. Semaglutide, affordable, highly effective, good Google search Petty Clinic Waco and reach out to the Petty Clinic team today for a free consultation with Dr. Petty to see if semaglutide is right for you. Go to PettyClinicLowT.com. Pizza, burgers, and Bears football. There's no place around Waco that serves them all other than Bubba's 33. Come show your green and gold and enjoy some of Waco's best food and beverages while watching your favorite team, the Bears. When real Bears fans get hungry, Bubba's 33 is the number one spot for ice-cold drinks, hand-stretched, stone-baked pizzas, and bacon-infused burgers. Join us for indoor or patio dining. Bubba's 33, Waco's restaurant and proud supporter of Baylor Bears football. Sick'em, Bears. This is 365 Sports, powered by Sikkim365.com. The 5 o'clock hour is sponsored by Edward Jones Investments with financial advisor Ben Erlinson, who will navigate you through today's financial climate. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Now here's Paul Catalina. John Machota of The Athletic joins us here on 365 Sports. A busy man because uh, it is Cowboys free agency, even though they haven't done much. He still has to be on alert. Uh, it's kind of like I would describe what uh, being a Cowboys beat writer this week is like, is knowing that you have a liver transplant patient 
but the liver is not just ready. And you just have to be on alert for the liver to get there in the helicopter. So he's just he's just waiting for that that time. They've done a couple things, but not a lot. John, the the Cowboys seem to have this view of the salary cap, and this actually might be the first year where their fears have come true because they have not had the financial flexibility to do what a lot of fans want them to do yet. But has their fear of the salary cap, rational or otherwise, put them in this position where Dak's window might be closing and they might not be able to get him to – they might not be able to get to a Super Bowl without a rebuild? Yeah, it's, it's tough to say because there's a part of me that thinks, all right, they're not going to do anything – noteworthy in free agency because they do expect to resign Dak and CD and Micah Parsons. And it's tough for any team with like three superstars. Even if you don't think those players are superstars to get a contract done with any of them, no matter what team it is, not just the Cowboys, they're going to get a superstar deal. Micah Parsons probably getting the highest paid defensive player deal. CD lamb is going to get the highest paid wide receiver. And if not there, he's going to be within the top two or three, which is all in the same 30 plus million per year neighborhood. And Dak's deal is going to be up there with the top highest paid quarterbacks too. So you're talking that's going to probably be over 50, 55, could be 60 million. I mean, that's, these are all such big investments. So that's, I mean, not just what they've done this week. I mean, that's kind of the feeling I got from talking to people in Indianapolis during the combine is that, that they don't want to do anything to jeopardize being able to resign those three guys. And, and, and I do believe they'll resign all three of them. The problem is, is that, you're not making any, any really big changes to make people think it's going to be any different at best than what it was last year. You're not going to have a better team than you did last year. And that team last year, although it was good during the regular season and, and it was great at home, it was awful in its only playoff game. So I, I completely get where, where a fan base would be frustrated by the lack of activity. And to be honest with you, I thought it was going to be a pretty solid, let's compare it to a fire uh, when they lost like that, and Jerry went and poured gasoline on that fire by saying the all-in comments and then talking about it more and more and not really giving you any details on it but not backing away from it. And then when you don't do anything in free agency, that gasoline just takes off, and now that fire is all out of control. And, and I, I've been covering the team for 13 years. During my time covering the team, the fan base has never been angrier. No, absolutely not. I mean, it, it is – like, there are – it's been too long of uh, – of them, you know what? They haven't had the decency to be bad to build up their draft picks. They only have the decency to be almost as good as they need to be to win a Super Bowl or mediocre. Like that that's the problem with them, right? Like they uh Jerry may not remember and he may not be able to let himself do it, but the reason that they won three Super Bowls is because their first ever draft pick was the greatest or second greatest quarterback in their history in Troy Aikman. It is, but I will also say that I do think Dak's a good enough player to win a Super Bowl. I really do think that. I know he, he hasn't had the best performances in his last couple of playoff games, but I do think that he does have that ability to where they believe that as well. And so as long as you have a guy like that, and there's so few quarterbacks that, that teams feel that way about, you're, you're worried about letting that player go and what's going to be the alternative, what's going to be the replacement. And, and the replacement could be something that's far worse. And they don't want to mess with something that could potentially be far worse. And so that's where you get yourself in a situation right here where you're like, we're, we're, we're good enough to keep it rolling and be competitive, but are we good enough to get over the hump and win in the postseason? And I think the way that you know Jerry meant all in is that, hey, it's going to be all in this season that if we don't, then there's going to be major changes in the offseason. And so maybe in Jerry's perspective, all in is, hey, I'm not giving any of these guys new contracts. I'm going to let them play this year out, and we're going to see how things go. And if they don't go well, and it's an epic disaster, maybe I'm not bringing back all three of those guys. But as of right now, I'm going to say that that's my goal. But maybe that's to Jerry's all in. And you know what? We can speculate anything we want on it because he hasn't been, you know, really straightforward on it. He likes us talking about it. He likes us trying to figure out what he's thinking. And so as I sit here today, I would think that Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, and Micah Parsons will be here for the next four or five plus years, but I can't say that with 100% certainty. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, John, what do you think made the Cowboys fans the maddest? That Derrick Henry didn't get a call or that they just haven't done anything else in general? That's a good question. Uh, there's levels to this. I think that Jerry saying all in was, well, no, 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 no. The foundation for this disaster is certainly the play in that Green Bay game. 
You know, that's one thing if they win a couple of playoff games and they lose to San Francisco in the NFC Championship game, they'd be they'd be they'd be upset because they didn't get back, they didn't get to a Super Bowl, and they had a good team, the best team that they've had in a long time on paper. But to lose the Packers, to get blown out by the Packers, to lose at home when you haven't lost at home in two seasons, uh, that right there was a great foundation for a very angry fan base. Then to come off and say that you're going to be all in, took it to another level. Then to find out that they're not doing anything during the first week of free agency of note. And then to find out that they're not even talking to some of these guys, not even kicking the tires on them. I mean, it is a recipe for, like I said, this is the angriest that they've been. And I, and I understand it, but that's the thing with sports is very rarely ever just one thing. And there's about three or four things right there that I think have got them on, on a point to where I, I don't think as much as you hear fans say, like, well, I'm just not going to go to games. I'm not going to buy stuff. That'll 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 make a little bit of a dent, but I just think that the bottom line with the Cowboys, there's so many diehard fans that they're going to have enough support that it's going to keep the dollars rolling in. Yeah. So, John, if I if if I had to ask you now, the starters at center, tackle, and running back, who will, will those be rookies or will they be flyer free agents? Right now, I, my prediction would be that all three of those are rookies. Um, I do think that. The uh, odds on favorite. I thought even, even, I don't know, a month left in the regular season, I would have told you that the odds on favorite for wherever their draft pick is was going to be an offensive tackle. And with them sitting at 24, I still feel the exact same way today. I think that's the leader in the clubhouse is an offensive tackle there. Uh, or a guard uh, to where then you'd push Tyler Smith out to left tackle. Um, but I just feel like 24, man, that just is, just seems like, or, or even if they were to trade back a little bit, their first round pick, I just feel like is going to be offensive lineman. So you address one of those there, and then I think you get your center and your running back somewhere in the second, third, or fifth round. But that's the other thing. If they trade back in the first, it kind of reminds me of that Travis Frederick draft where you know they, they had a pick, I believe it was 19. They traded back to 31 with San Francisco, took Frederick, but then they got the extra third, and then that's what they, they used on uh, Terrence Williams. I could see them potentially trading back if, if all the tackles they like are off the board. And then getting an offensive lineman, but then also getting you know a, a, an additional third or four, something along the lines to fill in the gap. They don't have that fourth. They traded for Trey Lance, but I do think you can you can fill those three positions in the draft without having to reach too much because I think I think you can get a good quality running back in the second or third round. And now if they swing and miss there, then it's going to be a committee of about four or five different guys that might tote the rock this year. That that running back in the second round should be Trey Benson. I'm just telling you right now, if if it comes and goes and Trey Benson does not have a start his helmet, I riot. Maybe alone, John. Maybe alone. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. I'm hey. I'm I'm right there with you. I mean, I know that there's obviously some injury history concerns, maybe from his time at Oregon with the knee and that. But find me a running back that doesn't have any injury concerns. I just I think he is. The, he would be the perfect fit because I don't really think that getting another let's say a small quick back is the answer because you can kind of do some of that stuff with Deuce Vaughn, with Cavante Turpin. You need a guy that can kind of run between the tackles, be physical, but then when he gets out on the edge, he still has a little bit of that speed as well. And that certainly is Trey Benson. And the problem though, is I will say is that 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 does seem attractive to many teams. And so it wouldn't surprise me, you know, if, if, if another team is interested in, in, in getting in front of the Cowboys to take someone like that. But, I just feel like they need a big physical running back. I thought they needed it last year in the draft. Now they absolutely have to have it. But uh, can I interest you in another former Florida State player in Delvin Cook? What would that do for you? Uh, I mean, look, for a stopgap, I'm fine with it. But, I mean, again, like, look, it, the kick in the tires on him is, you know, I, you know, John, you know I love him like a son, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't. I mean, like at this point, like maybe they should have done that last year. No, for sure they they needed to. That's the thing. Like I I I was totally on board with the moving on from Ezekiel Elliott, but they needed to replace him, and they really didn't. That the the Tony Pollard, Deuce Vaughn, Cavante Turpin, Hunter Lipke combination, just uh, Enrico Dowdle, like it's fine, but it was I just. For a team that really needs to fix the running game, you kind of need that bell cow back that kind of is the guy that you could really count on. And that's where that's where I do think that Benson would make a ton of sense. So maybe that's what they're thinking the same thing. I, I, I have heard this isn't a great running back class from top to bottom. You know, there's not a runner that you, you know, it's certainly not one of these previous drafts where you got some guys you're thinking of in the first. There's not a first round running back in this class. You're not, you're probably not going to see one in the top 50 picks. And so because of that, I could see a position where there's a run on them and then you 
you don't want them to overdraft somebody just to over just to fill a position because that is certainly the recipe for disaster with the Cowboys. That's been when they've drafted their worst is trying to fill holes as opposed to taking the best player available. Do you see wide receiver being something they would address in the draft? I think that it's not at the top of their list, but I think if the right player was there in the right situation, and let's say like, you know, that the scenario right there where like the running backs go off the board with a few picks in front of them, and there's this wide receiver that is clearly the best player they have on their board, I can't see them ruling that out. I mean, I don't think they would do it at 24, but I also didn't think they would take C.D. Lamb as Caleb on Chase on the board just because edge rusher was such a need for them in that in that draft. But, you know, C.D. Lamb ended up being a phenomenal pick, one of the best draft picks in Cowboys history. So uh, I do think that if the right wide receiver was there to fall to them, I, I, I wouldn't rule it out, but I don't, I don't think it's – I don't think it's in their top five needs right now. So, um, and this is the last question. I know you got to go, John. You got another uh, hit you have to do. Um, what um, does this mean for the future of Mike McCarthy? If look, he's in a situation he's won twelve games three years in a row, but they're not going to be able to supplement anything for him based on their cap situation, at least in the short term. And I know they're getting money because of Van Der Esch and Michael Gallup's expected, re- you know, his release that was very much expected um, with the nine million. But that's probably going to go to the guys we were talking about before. So doesn't this put Mike McCarthy in the position where Jerry can scapegoat him, even though Jerry and the front office haven't really done anything to help him out here? They can, but I think you'd be foolish if, if this everything goes off the track. You'd be foolish to put all the blame on Mike McCarthy. I mean, Jerry Jones gets it gets the majority of the blame if that's to happen again. I mean, he's the owner and general manager and he could have moved on from Mike McCarthy this off season and started moving on with the process. But you got Mike back for another year. You, Mike Zimmer's deal is for one year. All these guys that they're signing, Eric Hendrick, bringing back Jordan Lewis, all one year deals. And I imagine you're going to see more of that. And so it is going to be from that's the sense of our, I think Jerry been all in, like it's all in about this season, but it's not all in like we're going to be all in spending and making these big moves for this year. Like you've seen the Niners, or the Eagles, or the Rams, or the Bucks do in the past. That has helped propel those teams to the Super Bowl. But yeah, that's not the, that's not the type of thing they're going to do. I think the best hope that I could give fans is that maybe maybe we see a Stephon Gilmore slash Brandon Cooks type trade that happens where we really didn't expect that last year, and that and that also happened in March. Maybe maybe they got something cooking there where they go after a veteran player from another team, uh, where maybe they give up a future pick or something uh, to try and fill a hole there. I would I wouldn't completely rule that out. John Machota of The Athletic. John and I text every day and rarely talk about the Cowboys. I'll give everyone on our chat room one guess as to what we do talk about. <laughs> we, talk, we talk about the NIL collectives and whatever other way it takes to get the best players from high school to go to, to somehow end up in Tallahassee. Yeah. If John and I found a way to become billionaires together, you know what our <laughs> one charitable foundation would be. <laughs> would be helping those be wayward renov- guys. Yeah, it wouldn't be just renovations to Joe Campbell Stadium. It'd be it'd be a lot more help than that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. John Machota <laughs> of the Athletic. John, I'll talk to you soon, buddy. Sounds good. Thanks for having me on. All right, there we go. Yes. Garrett, uh, we talk, look, John, John, I need to get all of my, like, I need to have a collective of my friends, a council, right? Yeah. I need to get all these people together. Um, and maybe I will in Dallas cause John and I will definitely be at that SMU game, uh, this year as you should be. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We're, I'm telling you, uh, I, I, my plan right now is to be doing the show on Friday from SMU. Like I did the show from UCF last year. So. I think that's a fantastic idea, and I hope that comes to fruition. Yes. I'm really looking forward to that. Yes, and my goal will be to have Mike Norvell sitting right there. <laughs> Red Lashley will do it. Red I Lashley's mean, definitely down. He yeah, definitely he loves definitely it. he's definitely down. So, I, like, I don't know if I have the juice to get them both there at the same time. but I think you can make it work. I have I confidence I in you. I, I, like, I need, here's the thing. This is why uh, I need... I need I need more juice so I can just call these people up and have it happen. Smokey's got juice, man. Smokey's longevity, got juice, man. Longevity in the game. Yeah, longevity. I mean, he's a set, 107 years old, but <laughs> he's got juice. I've got a little bit of juice. I got like you know what I am. I'm like a juice sample. Like you're walking through the store, like ooh, that's good. Little, juice. A little shot of it. A little shot of juice. A little energy shot of juice. Like oh, that's good juice. Where I can get more of that? But like you know, there's people who have like the jug of juice. I right. need. I need. I want more juice. <laughs> which 
is why. Garrett, pull it up again. Do you have the take zap thing? Uh, I do. You do? Boom. All right. Let's talk about, again, here is juice for you. Uh, follow me on the take zap. I have just uh, gotten on it. It is... Um, all for sports. You can make picks, all these things. Uh, follow play-by-play -play for every game. Fresh, real-time content. Uh, go on the Takes app. Uh, I put a link in the chat room earlier, and I will uh, put it there again because I am that kind of guy, and it does not take any physical exertion at all. So go to that app. Uh, follow me on Takes. Follow other people on Takes, but go to Takes uh, and do that. It's pretty awesome. Uh I've uh, I like I haven't even figured it all out yet, but there's a ton of things like it's a beautiful, beautiful app. It's it's wonderful. Um, so there you go. Go to the takes app right there. March Madness stuff going on right now. So follow that link. Sign up for it. Download the app on your uh, preferred uh, mobile device. When we come back, Gary, we have not delved too much into the CFP thing. No. today. we've had to get to like topic to topic to topic. And I'm like, you know, I'm like I'm ping pong and all over the place here. I'm trying to make smoke puns. Uh, <laughs> All the time it's not this is not as easy as it looks people like i am like i am absolutely up here i'm like elvis in 73 in vegas that's what it's going on right now i'm trying to get the orchestra behind me i'm trying to you know i'm trying to get burn and love going right and maybe the casino doesn't see it anyway <laughs> um Gar Garrett's probably never seen the movie Elvis and doesn't understand the reference, but <laughs> I don't think I have. That, that's one I haven't seen. It's the it's the newer one. It's with Austin Butler. The and Tom Hanks is the. I know my daughter has Tom watched Parker. that. My daughter's a big Elvis fan. Your daughter is cool. She is pretty cool. Your daughter's cool. I've never met your. I've met. You've met her once. I've met her once. But once. Years ago, like she was. Like, you have not met her since she's grown up. Yeah, yes. I've not met her since she's in high she's school. I met cool. her when she was like in middle school. Yeah. Yeah. You know, who's this lame dad guy you work with, Dad? <laughs> Gosh. I mean, not the undying affection I get from Parker. Oh, that's different. That, that's totally different, man. <laughs> that was like my post-game co-host. That is your road dog. Parker. Yeah, absolutely. No, I don't get any of that. But no, uh, she's very cool uh, if she likes that. So anyway, when we come back, we'll dive into that. And then my top five at the end of the show, this is 365 Sports. With so many companies and policies out there, it gets so confusing shopping for insurance, and I never know if I'm getting the policy that's right for me. Luckily, I met the team at the Niche Group Insurance Agency. With the Niche Group, you can go to one company and get access to coverage options from many insurance carriers, and you get to speak to a real person about your specific coverage needs. With the Niche Group, I know I'm getting the right coverage at the right price. If you need insurance, talk to the experts at the Niche Group at 1-800-258-8302. Don's Humidor, your home with a 48-foot walk-in humidor with the elite cigar brands from around the world, including the number one cigar of the year, Aging Room, Quattro, Nicaragua. Plus, they have the great brands like Macanudo and Artur Fuente, Rocky Patel, Aston, and so much more. CBD, great for sore muscles, aches and pains, sleep, Vita Dreams, and anxiety, mild depression, general health and wellness. Their staff, very knowledgeable on the subject. If anyone is curious about CBD, ask Carolyn Ashley, Don Schumanor in the Talwa Shopping Center off Valley Mills in Waco. Baylor Scott & White Southwest Sports Medicine Orthopedics, the team physicians for Baylor Athletics, diagnosing and treating all sports-related injuries, including concussions. These specialists also provide orthopedic services for athletes and non-athletes alike. Whether it's knee or shoulder pain, a wrist injury, orthopedic spine care, and even an arthritis and total joint clinic. Trust the doctors Baylor Athletics trust. Baylor Scott & White Southwest Sports Medicine Orthopedics wants to get you back in the game. Waco Custom Marketplace is your hometown grocery store with a full-service butcher shop and bakery. Hi, this is David Smoke. The butcher shop can take your customized orders for seafood, pork, and poultry and custom cut your favorite steaks from bacon-wrapped fillets, sirloin steaks, bone-in ribeyes, boneless ribeyes, and even prime rib. Cut specifically the way you want, the thickness that you want. They're all delicious. They have Norwegian salmon, mahi-mahi, catfish fillets, sliced hammer turkey, variety of cheese, and several options of sausage 
links, and even regular jalapeno or cheese snack sticks. Fresh chicken breast or whole chickens, sliced bacon, pork chops, and ground beef. Marinated beef or chicken fajitas. And always large briskets and tri-tip available, plus fresh vegetables. So the great product, customer service, and tradition continues at Waco Custom Marketplace, a full-service butcher shop and bakery, open Monday through Saturday. The Bauer family, Waco Custom Marketplace, 425 Lake Air Drive in Waco, or Waco Custom Marketplace.com. This is 365 Sports, powered by Sikkim365.com. Enjoying the show? Hit the like button and subscribe. <laughs> Kim Coulter, thanks for the $4.99 Super Chat. Jerry Jones is secretly Nero. He fiddles while the Cowboys burn. I love it. L- l- listen, mythology reference. Look, Kyle Visser won the chat room today. He won it with his Rick Patino comment. But look, Kim, for that one, metal stand, buddy. You're up there. You guys are up there listening to the national anthem together right now. That's what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are up there together. Listen to the anthem. Tears in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Tears in your eyes. I, uh, Garrett, I'm very excited. I'm going to tell you this. I'm excited because my my best friend from growing up, Billy Garlock, uh-huh. uh, is coming to visit me today. Uh, he's been, um, his comp- company sent him to Houston. And it sucks for him because he's got to be away from his, his wife and kids for a month, which I don't think you could do. No, it's hard. It's hard. You were gone for like, a dude, week. Two, like, yeah, like the week at the Super Bowl, about thursday i was going crazy yeah yeah you you you, and so like and his kids are uh well uh his kids are about as old as your daughter is so maybe one older one younger but like they're high school like eighth grade you know so it's it's tough you know Mm -hmm. to to be way that long and uh so i'm I'm excited that the the benefit in the way that i get to you know give him old home week is for him to come to waco he he's done this before one other time uh and he he like we scheduled our wedding reception and their vacation at the mm-hmm. same time. So he didn't get to come out like all the things we did. He didn't get to do that. Um, and we've known each other since we were 12 years old. We sat next to each other in school. We were best friends automatically. He has not yet met my wife. Oh, and wow. I've known his wife since the very beginning of the relationship because they were high school sweethearts. Right. So this is a very different dynamic. And I have to time it out to make sure that he doesn't get to the house and have to sit outside because, like, both of them have been like, look, I, we need you to introduce us because it would be weird just the two of them sitting yeah. in my house waiting for me to be there. So I'm very excited about this, but I'm also ridiculously nervous because they both know things about me better than most people from yeah. different ends of my life that are embarrassing. So are you nervous that... He might. Oh, it's going to be an embarrassing weekend for me, no matter what. It'll be fun, but I do know that like there's going to be things where I'm like, oh jeez. I think it's worth it though. That's part of it, right? Like, yeah. like the, you get it all out there. I, I think it gives Amanda another opportunity to learn a, a, even more about you. Some things she might not. Um, it should be fun. I, I'm looking for. I'm thinking you're going to have fun with this, Paul. Yeah, I know. I'm thrilled. I, my mom. My mom's very excited. She's. Oh, know, I bet she's she very excited to see Billy. Uh, but I am. I'm like you know. There's a little bit of nerve to me because like. It's just different. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, like, this is my, well, no, she met uh, another one. Like one of my friends, Rusty was here for the, for the reception this summer. Uh, and he and I and Billy were, were all friends growing up. Uh, so he was here and then he was my college roommate later on. So like I've, she's met all these people that have known me at like all these different points of my life. Right. And so I'm wondering if it was like a paint by number, like where she is on what is up with this dude I married, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which I think she has like every morning when she wakes up, she's like, well, I'm here. I'm here. Well, what's going on? <laughs> I think almost all women do like when they come to, when they look at their husbands, they're like, there's a moment uh, where they're like, like damn, like, uh, is this uh, what I did? Is yeah. this what I did? But like, he's, you know, he's not capable of cleaning a house by himself. Like, dude, I'll I'm, I'm tell you right now, if, if something breaks in our house, my wife has a better chance of fixing it than I do. Like, I am, I'm not that dude. Uh, look, I have to, it depends on what it is, but nine times out of 10, eight and a half times out of 10, I got to call a guy. Absolutely. I got to call a guy. See, there's nothing wrong with that, right? We're helping them provide for their family. Yes. That's how I exactly. view it. Exactly. We're not l- less manly than that guy. No. At all. Without we us, have, there'd be no them. We have talents that they don't. <laughs> exactly. We haven't, we haven't identified them as of yet. 
but they're there. <laughs> like, I mean, look, if somebody needs something wrote or something, you yeah. got it. I got it. I mean, we, yeah, got, we got you. That. We got like, you. Yes. The, the, in the barter system. Like, yes. do you want me to help you write something? That's and how like, it should be. I don't, I don't need that. I'm a plumber. And like, okay, well, when you do. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I'm your guy. <laughs> do you need, you know, do you need a, a colorful pitch man for your plumbing company? This guy right here. See, you help each other. Yeah, That's what exactly. It's about. We barter. We barter. Uh, anyway, let's get to the college football playoff expansion. Yep. Garrett, this has, and again, we talked about Oregon State and Washington State earlier, just getting royally effed in this. Raw deal, yeah. Badly. Raw deal in this. Um, I mean, like, here's why, like, you, you honestly couldn't rope these two in for, like, may, I mean, it wasn't going to be $6 million, but, like, you couldn't rope them in for a little bit more? I mean, you would think there's plenty. That, that's the thing with this, right? Like, there's plenty of money you easily could have, but the greed and the negligence and the everybody being so self-centered, they don't care about them. That's that's the hard part. Um, there's no way that they should. You should be able to split up 1.3 billion and not be able to cut them in with more than that. That's ridiculous. Um, another number that I'm not really comfortable. Are the G5 schools are getting two million. They're essentially going to be a G5 school. Why aren't you at least starting them off on par with them? It makes no sense that you are going to cut Oregon State and Washington State behind Boise State. Well, what you know, the it hell? doesn't. And does it like it's like to me, and I know this this probably isn't it, but it does feel like a punishment for holding things up. I you know, like yeah, it's I not, can see it's that. Not, I can see that. I don't but, think it is. But it like it doesn't, it does like this little thing doesn't like if I said, are you punishing them for doing it because of this? Like, that little fact doesn't prove that it's not. Yeah, but I mean, like, know? if the shoe was on the other foot, right? Like, you would do the exact same thing that Schultz and them did. You would be trying to hold it up because why wouldn't you? Like, you've yeah. got to fight for what you have. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know at all. So, one thing I'm – all right, so looking at these numbers right now uh, – the annual payouts you're going to get per Ross Dellinger, SEC and Big Ten are going to get 21 to 23 million. Notre Dame gets 12.5. ACC and uh, Big 12 will get 12 to 14 million, with the, more likely the 14 going to the ACC because they have the brands there. I, I don't understand why Notre Dame gets more than the ACC or Big 12 schools. Like, I understand they are so irrelevant now. Like, they have not done anything in my lifetime of relevance other than the Manti Teo thing and getting embarrassed in the national championship by Alabama. I don't understand why, if you're a singular program, you already got all the money from NBC that you're not having to split with nobody, why you're going to get a bump over these other programs. That makes me sick. I, yeah, I don't, well, I don't look, get it. They, they, because they were the first, like, here's why. Do you know who the first brand was? It was Notre, Notre Dame. Notre Dame. I know, but like, They were the dude, first come on. brand. They like everybody else was like, you know, uh, you know, there was Michigan, Ohio, like all those schools were there, but the, the first real brand was Notre Dame. And that's why. Uh, and look, like we've had different people on the show, like Matt Brown said it, like, because of a decision you made a hundred years ago. Yes. This is, this is where we are a hundred years ago. And it's not, none of this, the college football playoff is completely based in the now. Because like Josh alluded to and Craig did, like these conferences, are, like there's going to be there's going to be more cool matchups. There's going to be more of them, correct? But they're not all going to be cool. No. So, look, even the NFL's like that. Like depending on how good teams are, look, um, Cowboys versus Packers is always good, right? Uh, Packers versus Bears always good, right? Cowboys versus Panthers, like they'll still get good ratings. But that'll be a week where the Cowboys don't have the best rating. Correct. Right? No one cares. Like, so the same thing's going to happen. USC versus Ohio State, hot damn. Oregon versus Michigan, who boy. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Washington versus Maryland, ah, you know, like, all right. You know, and there are, like, there, and there's going to have to be those schools that are in there. And Maryland's a good team. Like, might look good, but they they're are. not great. But again, you've got. When you start to push all the brands together, and this is what your problem is now in the ACC, is that you've got three big brands in there in football. Correct. Um, 
in Miami, Clemson, and Florida State. One who's on the fringe but has never really been a football power in, in North Carolina, but they've, mm-hmm. they've been consistently good. And, but they're great in pretty much everything, at like everything else, yes. like baseball, Lacrosse, basketball, women's soccer. basketball, soccer, like you know, like I mean, whatever sport they have, North Carolina is really good. They're 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 an excellent athletic department. You have all of them saying like, well, look, I mean, we're not trying to dog Rutgers and Maryland and all these other schools, but like, what? I mean, why? It makes no sense. Yes. Like why? Like based on who we are, why? Like we like. They've we've we've put for like especially when it comes to like some of those schools, these other ones have put forth more resources into athletics forever than 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 yes. some of them have, you know. So you know, like Iowa's consistently good, but like you know, when Iowa and Minnesota play for Florida Rosedale, do you care unless you're I either a college football less. super fan or you are a fan of one of those two schools or even like even a Big Ten fan? Like they're like. I, I live here in Big 12 country. We, you know, you and I watch most of the Big 12 games together mm-hmm. every week uh, when we're doing pre and post game shows. Um, but I'm an ACC fan. But you know, Wake Forest and NC State doesn't really do anything for me unless they're both good. You like, know, dude, I'm an SEC fan. I don't care about watching Vandy and Mississippi State. I don't give a damn. Yeah. So again, like you can put all these brands together, but every game's gonna have a every league's gonna have a dud, and that like they're they've planned all this out and like, it might work out for them, but the, the, the potential for it not to. So, um, it, it's just, I, I don't know. All right. So one thing, one thing that I would like to get your opinion on. So mm-hmm. they have the clause in this contract where they can revisit in 2028 to evaluate where the playoff stands and they can make any necessary adjustments to it at that point. Right now, with the SEC and the Big Ten essentially doubling up everybody else in the Power Four in Notre Dame. I feel like this is an opportunity for those, for the Big Ten and the SEC to make so much more money that they could, if they did it correctly, they could structure it to where they could set up to pay the players on their teams. Yeah. And then they review it in 2028 and they say, if they're wanting to separate at that point, that gives you the viable opportunity to say, okay, we have the money now to pay out. We're going to go ahead and do our own thing now. And then that's, I think that gives them an opportunity financially to separate if they wanted to do that. Here's my thing. If, okay. Yeah. And they do that, but you're going to separate out and you're not going to have these great matches. Like you're not going to have most of the state of Texas. You're not going to have, but, you have the part of the state of Texas that matters, right? Yeah, in the, in the, but, to the to the company. You also like, but that's foot like part of the the thing you get with Texas is everybody kind of watches everybody, right? Like you you have that. If mm-hmm. you take that away, then that that's gonna hurt. You also here's the other thing you do. All right, so say those two conferences can split off, right? And they're gonna be the thing. Well, I as a viewer am gonna be like, look, I don't care how much more money Iowa has than Clemson and North Carolina. I'm not watching Iowa and Minnesota. I completely agree like, with you. Who, like, I what, completely like, agree with you. Like, are they ever gonna like so again, like what they need to realize is everything's better together. Yes. Everything's better together. College football is what it is because of regionality. Or and it was. then and then like the opportunity to prove that I'm like I've won in my region, I'm ready to go out and prove that I'm the best. All, in all the regions. But now that's just, I mean, it, it's just so much different. Like, I, I love that there is an expanded playoff. I love it. The problem is, is it's expanded, but it's still slanted towards the powers cool. that be. And that's just not right. It, it's just not, it like, and it's not, I don't think it's going to work out how they want it to. They'll always have the viewers, they'll always have big matchups, they'll always have loud PR arms. The networks that carry them will say, this is the greatest thing you've mm-hmm. ever seen in your life. But it's not going to be if it's not everybody included and everybody having a shot at it. Because if they do break off, they're going to have, this is the greatest thing you've ever seen in your life. And then also don't forget to watch the other playoff, which will be the second greatest thing you've ever seen in your life. Ah, but it's not. Yeah, I don't. I don't know like how long because I think initially it will be cool. I, I think initially it would be cool to see the matchups, your big matchups. But after a couple of years, I don't know if those matchups will hold the same value because I think what makes them unique, right, is 
that's something you don't get to see. You get to see it more often over the past few years where there's been an emphasis on having the high uh, non-con matchups like Florida State, LSU, et cetera, et cetera. But if that becomes like an every year thing with these big matchups, they kind of lose what makes them special in the first place. And I don't know how long that could truly be sustainable as a product. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ab- absolutely. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, again, like they need to appreciate it. Like I know this is pie in the sky bull crap right now of us talking about like, this is the way, but I just, I just hope that there's a way the other leagues can find a way to win enough to where it's That's like, the only thing you could salvage. Yeah. To where it's like, Oh, wait a minute. Like, I know that they're not like, I know that they're not like, you know, and the thing, here's the thing that sucks about Florida state trying to leave the ACC is there's only a couple teams in either of these leagues that can reasonably hang yes with them and they're trying to and they're they're trying to get out and leave so they're not really trying to solve the problem they're just accepting the reality of it so that's where i disagree with my alma mater here and that's where i'll disagree with the teams that are trying to leave the ACC mm-hmm. Obviously, the ACC's put them in a situation contractually where they can't make it better financially. Correct. They can't. They decided they were just ridiculously short sighted on this and were were did not foresee that even though realignment was happening then when they did this. But my God, like you know, like why did you not see that? And you've got this now where you're stuck. You're stuck in this mm-hmm. deal, and you've got one of your big brands fighting to get out and trying to leave instead of being able to say, all right, we're here. We're with you. Let's fight this all the way. That's not what's happening. That like, they're just like, no, we, we want some of that. We want some of that. Like, you know, we want a a crap load more than Iowa has. We want what Iowa has, you know, we want a crap load more than Washington and Oregon have. We want some of that. You know, Clemson and Florida State, like Miami even, even though it's been a long time, can all say that, hey, you know, Washington maybe, but like we've won more than Oregon has, we've won more than Iowa has, we've won more than Maryland and Rutgers and Indiana and Purdue have, you know, we've won more than Vanderbilt has, we've won more than South Carolina has, we've we've won more than Kentucky has, and, you know, we've won more than Missouri and Mississippi State and Ole Miss, we've won more than all of them. So why are we second-class citizens? So instead of saying like, all right, we're going to fight it and prove to you that we're not, they're going to be like, well, I mean, we can't because the money gap's too big. Florida State's over the wall, and we'll see where they go. But bottom line is, it, like, it's just going to be, it's just going to be bad. Yeah. It's there's not. I mean, like, the only thing they can do is capitulate and go. All right. Well, I guess we have to be in the SEC or the Big Ten. Well, see, that's the thing. Like you were talking about that. Uh, I think that. You're right. Like the ACC's got to find a way to get, and the Big Twelve got to find a way to be uh, to, to be competitive and win championships. But more so, like the ACC can't. I don't know necessarily that the ACC can afford to have one of the Big Three win. Like I think it would make more sense and benefit them if somehow Virginia Tech rolled off yeah. and won. Like <laughs> that's the only thing that could that because I think that would add more value to the conference as a whole than. Florida State saying, okay, well, well we can like, win and flex on. Yeah, like, I that's, think that's, that's the why thing. The, like, the Big 12 uh, in the conference right now, like Colorado has a national championship in football. None of the schools in te- – like recently, you know, I don't want to get into TCU in the 30s, but like, you know, Baylor doesn't have one. Tech doesn't have one. No. Oklahoma State doesn't have one. You know, um, Utah doesn't have one. You know, Arizona, Arizona State don't have them. You know, so the whole, the whole Houston doesn't have one. The whole conference, UCF doesn't, Cincinnati doesn't. So the whole conference has one national championship in, in, recent mem- in, in recent memory where, like, the coaches were alive. Like, the coaches at this conference were alive when, when they won it. So Oklahoma State, Kansas State, can't, like, somebody needs to win a, a title in the Big 12. Yes. But how are you going to do that you can't. when you have no built-in and, and – and financial advantages. You, you just can't. You just I can't don't know. do it. Yeah, absolutely. When we come back, top five West Virginia coaching targets. This will pretty much be me because Garrett. I'm not familiar. I'll be real honest. He's going to be honest with you. He's not stay familiar. stay in my lane. Yeah. So a top five where I shout into the void about the Mountaineers' <laughs> next head coaching uh, candidates. This is 365 Sports. 
Rev up your excitement. Celebrate the spirit of adventure during the Jeep Celebration event. Join us at Alan Samuels in Waco as we roll out incredible deals on rugged and reliable Jeep vehicles you love. Seize the moment and drive home in the new Jeep of your dreams. With special financing options and exclusive offers, there has never been a better time to explore the world of Jeep. Hurry in. The savings won't last long. Visit AlanSamuelsDCJ.com and see them firsthand only at Alan Samuels in Waco. Let your adventure begin. Come by. Let's be friends. At Ideal MRI, we feel blessed to be a part of the Waco community. We're a small family business right here in Central Texas, and our goal is to bring down the cost of health care while maintaining high quality. At times like this, the cost of health care has never been more important, and unfortunately, significant illnesses and injuries still occur. That's why Ideal MRI is open and here to serve you through the difficult time. We offer premium MRIs just like a hospital with state-of-the-art technology and specialists, but you'll pay less. Sometimes thousands of dollars less, whether you're using insurance or not. At Ideal MRI, we accept most insurance and there are no hidden costs. Even offering financing if that's needed, everything included in the price, and you'll not get something as a surprise in the mail later on. If you need an MRI, ask your doctor about Ideal MRI. They'll know. You can schedule an appointment safely from home online in minutes at IdealMRI.com or give us a call, 833-IDEAL-MRI, Ideal MRI. MRI.com. TFNB Your Bank for Life is the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Find out why more Central Texans are making TFNB their bank for life. Sign up for our Edge checking and savings accounts to earn interest or cash back. With five convenient locations and an award-winning mobile app, banking has never been easier. TFNB Your Bank for Life. Member FDIC. want to know why Stonewood Dental is so successful? Listen to what happy customers have to say. It's pleasant. It's different than any other dentist's office. I really feel like they care. And it's not that you're here for two hours waiting on someone to take care of you. It's quick and easy. And, you know, I bring my kids and my kids love being here, too. They really love the treasure box. <laughs> Staff is really nice and accommodating, real friendly. You feel more like home. It's not sterile looking. Everybody has their own personalized rooms with decorations and decor, and they'll even have a blanket for you when it's cold. <laughs> I've recommended people to actually come here, and they are patients now. I really love it here. It feels like family. Learn more, stonewood-dental.com. Time for Paul Catalina's Top 5. Brought to you by Texas Beef House. Where's the best beef in Texas? Your house when you order from Texas Beef House. Unleash the flavor of Texas raised Wagyu. From our pasture to your plate, TexasBeefHouse.com. Top 5 West Virginia head coaching candidates. We're trying to get young. We're getting young energy. Into the Mountaineers. Younger, hipper, cooler, baby. And I'm going to tell you right now, I did not put Dusty May on this list like I did with Louisville, but he could very well be on this list, and he'll be on everybody's list. He should be. He's probably on Michigan's list. He's on Ohio State's list. Everybody knows it. He's, he's on every list. Let's just say that Dusty May from FAU is automatically the emeritus candidate on all these lists I will make. But top five candidates for the West Virginia head coaching job. Number five, Pat Kelsey, College of Charleston. A 75 and 26 record uh, as a head coach uh, between Winthrop and College of Charleston, where he's been since 2021. Uh, four time uh, Big South regular season champion uh, when he was at Winthrop, um, and a two time CAA regular season champion when he was at College of Charleston. A young guy. Just 40, 48 years old, and I say that knowing he's four years older than me. He's young. Uh, he is an up-and-comer. He's won where he's been at College of Charleston. Uh, I think bears a look uh, at West Virginia, uh, played at Xavier, um, Wyoming and Xavier, but played point guard at Xavier in his career. Pat Kelsey, an excellent choice 
if they should make it small school to big school. And Garrett, I do think that basketball mm -hmm. does a way better job at this than football. I, I think that football starting to go like, hey, like Lance Leipold, Kalen DeVore. Like, there's a whole like, track. Yeah. There's, there's some guys that we can maybe maybe do this with and, and, and win with. But I like, and I think basketball does as well, a small school to big school. And that guy go, oh, look, he can win here. Well, I think that happens because they actually have an opportunity to play the bigger schools at the end of the year. And you mentioned him at Winthorpe. Winthorpe's always in the mix when it comes to March Madness. So, yeah, I think it makes sense that those guys have had an opportunity. We've seen so many upsets. Uh, you know, Porter Moser, what he did at Loyola Marymount going to Oklahoma. There's so many things that you could point to. And I think just having that opportunity in March to showcase that and show that you can compete uh, against these. Look at Shaka Smart. Like, Shaka Smart never would have got the job at Texas if yeah. he wouldn't have had the opportunity in March at VCU. So it makes a lot of sense for these guys to have that opportunity. Yeah. Next up, number four, Darian DeVries at Drake. Uh, 150 and 54 record as a head coach. Uh, one and two in the NCAA tournament in his career. Uh, Two-time Mountain uh, Missouri Valley Conference uh, tournament champions uh, last year and this year. Uh, won the regular season uh, championship in 2019. Uh, Two-time uh, Missouri Valley Coach of the Year. Um, and... He um, he comes from the Greg McDermott tree uh, at Creighton, and uh, where he was an assistant for 17 years, and for the last six years he's been at Drake and has done a fantastic job at Drake. Uh, someone who clearly has raised him a level, and also 48 years old. I don't know why I fell into this with these guys, but someone I do think bears looking at from uh, for West Virginia. Number three, uh, Mark Byington at James Madison. This is a name I've heard thrown out more than most when it comes for this. Mm -hmm. And um, so far, he has a 219 and 136 record. He is 47 years old, uh, so he's, he's younger. Um, won the Sun Belt this year. Uh, James Madison having a great athletic year, by Absolutely. the way. And it could wind up with them losing their football coach. Kurt Signetti obviously went to Indiana, and Mark Byington is probably going to go somewhere else. But again, another young guy, uh, energy, uh, winning conferences, 81-35 and 35 overall as a head coach. Uh, and this would be – but uh, this would be, I believe, his first NCAA tournament as a head coach. So um, – Maybe the second. But so this is a huge jump. He's been winning consistently at James Madison. That's a one bid league, uh, the, the, the Sun Belt. Like, mm -hmm. well, I guess it's probably not, but the CAA where they were before, now that they've moved up. So again, they weren't uh, just this is their first year as a, as a, Division one program, uh, the Sun Belt one or two bid league maximum most of the time. Uh, so he's got that bid this year rolling along, uh, you know, close to the area. That's where I was going to go. Yeah. Recruiting everything, be able to get into New yeah. York and, and know the, the the coaches and everything. I think yeah. that would be smart. He's from he's born in Virginia, you know, Perfect. so which yeah. is you know obviously just east of them because uh, <laughs> they are West Virginia, <laughs> but. Um, that's your geography lesson for the day, Garrett. So there we go. Just know that regular Virginia is just to the east of West Virginia. And West Virginia is, no. in <laughs> me, one of the most underrated, beautiful states I've ever been to. And I love West Virginia. It's beautiful. So, um, but yes, West Virginia. I probably have that wrong, but. <laughs> <laughs> There's regular Virginia, and then there's West Virginia. They're two different Virginias. Thanks, Unlike the Dakotas, which are both exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> there should not be. I'm, I'm of the belief there should never have been two Dakotas. There should just, just have been, been one, Dakota. Just Dakota. Just Dakota. I can see that. I can and then Washington, D.C. should be our 50th state. That's just me. But. Okay. Okay. No. But I can get behind that. No. You know. Uh, especially since they don't get to like vote on their own stuff. Like Congress has to determine how 
Washington DC gets their Some funding. Nonsense. I, I, I'd like if Washington DC was what it was meant to be when it was built of just the capital and that no one was really going to live there except the president and like mm-hmm. a couple other people, then yes. Not a major but, metropolitan But now area. that it's like the seventh largest city in the United States of America, like maybe, you know, it's that way bigger out. than Rhode Island. Like maybe we should give those people the same <laughs> benefit that everybody else. I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, call me a wing nut for that. Uh, this one may be a little bit more of a stretch because he's a very new head coach, but Amir Abdur Rahim from South Florida, 23 and six this year in his first year as the head coach. Um, well, I guess he's maybe a little better than that, but uh, he was at Kennesaw State for a few years and then here uh, at, at South Florida, and they are they're going to the tournament. Uh, you know, they're going to the tournament, mm-hmm. uh, South Florida is, and it's been a great year for him. So I doubt he gets to see much more time at, um, at South Florida, 23 and six this year. I'm sorry, his coaching record at Kennesaw state, which again is a low, uh, lower, uh, thing. He was 45 and 74 there, but listen to this at Kennesaw state. If you're trying to build a program, mm-hmm. which is why Louisville needs to give notice to him. One in 28, his first year, zero and 16 of the conference. Okay. Five and nineteen his second year, two two and thirteen in the conference. His third year, thirteen and eighteen, seven and nine in the conference. His fourth year, which was two years ago, twenty six and nine, fifteen and three, and got into the NCAA tournament. Sounds like Matt Rule <laughs> of basketball. I mean, so if you want to talk about a guy who's a pro, and then rolls in and wins the conference regular season tournament uh, in the AAC or regular season this year in the AAC, the tournament's still going on. I'm sorry, but they're 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 making. I would think if South Florida's not in this tournament, yeah, like even if they don't win the the the, the conference tournament this week, they've been royally screwed. Uh, so, uh, I think this dude's a builder and he's a really good coach. And South Florida is a place that's growing and a place that you can get talent to, but it's not West Virginia. It's nope. not in the Big Twelve. Uh, I think. I think this is. I like to me. I maybe wouldn't uh, like if if not for this other guy, I would have put him number one for West Virginia. Although he and Mark Byington, like all these, are kind of right there together. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you want to talk about a builder? That is a builder there at. Um, that's now at South Florida and maybe, maybe South Florida skates by and they, everybody wants to see him do another one, but Mm -hmm. uh, Kennesaw state, that was, I mean, it was nothing, nothing when he got there and he had to go through two really bad years before he even got to a mediocre year and then won the conference. Florida's kind of turned into a hotbed for basketball. Like oh, FAU, look. Miami last year, yeah. like what you're seeing now with USF, look, UCF. Yeah. Man. Florida's won a couple national yeah. titles, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, I'm done with that. I agree <laughs> with that. Freaking Gators. Joakim Noah. <laughs> I do like Joakim Noah. I know you don't. I do. Lo- I love. I'm a big Joakim Noah guy. Stupid French a hole. I don't know. <laughs> I, li- I, li- I get down with Joakim Noah. Here's the Noah. thing Joakim Noah. Like he might be the Kenny Chesney to me. We're like, I don't like Kenny Chesney, but like everybody else in the world, like he's probably a really nice guy. Yeah. And so I'm going to be the jerk that, that doesn't like Kenny Chesney. Um, well, I, I, I can agree with you on Kenny Chesney, but like I, I Joe feel like Akeem that. Noah, I feel like different. if Joe Akeem Noah and I were in a room and we were talking, I'd be like, man, I'm like, I like you. I don't, I don't, I don't okay. want to. It's what happened with Sark. Right. Okay. So what happened okay. with Sark? You weren't with us yet, but we we met Sark and interviewed him at Big Twelve Media Days, and we got it was such a great interview. And I was, was there. Oh, you were. There. I was there. That no, was my this first. Was, year. This was our first year. Like you weren't because it was. Oh, that uh, was the next year. Okay. Yeah, okay. So anyways, the first. But uh, but yeah. So we met Sark and talked to him, and the three of us sat there and we're like, crap. Really I like, like this guy. guy. <laughs> it's like, and the thing is, it's the same way with Mac Brown. Like, I really liked Mac Brown. Um, I like Charlie Strong. I didn't dislike Tom Herman, and like he was just on the show the other day. But like he at Texas, like there were things that was like a different. Dude, that was like, different. Yeah, you're 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 getting a little you're getting a little here. You know, we need you out of here. <laughs> like, you know, you're Dial a Mensa dude. Like, let's see the Mensa stuff, not here. You know, but <laughs> anyway. But number one, Nico Medved. Uh, who is up for a ton of coaching jobs. Uh, Furman, Drake, he was there. Uh, been at Colorado State the last few years. Overall record at Colorado State, 115 and 73. Colorado State, 24 and 9 uh, this year in 10 and 8 in the Mount West Conference. Um, and someone who's just, 
you know, like growing up the ladder, mm -hmm. but I do think that he has um, a really reasonable shot to get this job at West Virginia. He's going to be a hot candidate. Uh, a lot of other places, although a lot of better records that we've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe I should have put him third and, and Byington first, but uh, watch out for Nico Medved uh, in a lot of coaching searches and probably the West Virginia one as well. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of opportunities for him. I, yeah. You know, even if he doesn't land there, uh, you can expect plenty of, whether it's Vanderbilt, Michigan, or whoever, uh, definitely somebody, he's going to be uh, getting a lot of calls. Yeah, so there we go. Um, retired stockbroker. Mm -hmm. uh, here's what he said. Paul Catalina, your best one-man show to date. Maybe you should do this more often. Oops, I forgot you have your own show. LOL. Have a great evening and weekend all Thank you, uh, retired stockbroker. And thank you to all of you who tuned in today. Thank you to all of our guests, to John Machoda and Josh Neighbors and Grayson and Owen Buchanan. Uh, great stuff today. Garrett, thank you so much. Thank you. We had, we had fun today. Did have fun. We had fun. We, what did we like? We should end the show with like Sesame Street. Like, what did we learn today? <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by the letter R. <laughs> R for really are you doing this CFP? What or W for what have you done to Oregon State and Washington State? Poor, poor Oregon <laughs> State, Washington. I feel so horrible for them, man. W for why, God, why, which is what they say to themselves every morning <laughs> when they get up. Oh, God. <laughs> so, all right, uh, we're back on Monday. All the crew together um, will be a smoke-filled lounge. Woo. Boom! Last punt of the day. Run it. Have a great weekend, everybody. Enjoy some basketball. Uh, follow me on takes. Uh, follow that link. This is 365 Sports.